Hello, Disventure Dispatchers. Today is the most high-pitched episode today, because we will be hitting all the notes regarding every details of this episode. Starting off, we're going to have the one person that is unmuted, Genesis. Um, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Genesis. I, well, you already know me. Hopefully, you've watched the previous episodes. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this episode, because it's really good. It's one of my favorites in the entire show. Yeah, all right. That's awesome, Genesis. I had prepared a question just for you. So we're going to play okay. a little game. It's called Date, Marry, and Unalive. We're going <laughs> to pick three characters, and they've been specifically chosen for you. It is D3 Ashley, DC1 Ashley, and Beta Ashley. So pick now. I know you love them all. <laughs> mind. Okay. All right. Oh, God. Okay. Wait, 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 so date, marry, or unalive? Um, yeah. Hoo, 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 hoo. Okay, okay. Uh, beta Mary or beta Miriam, beta Ashley is going in the unalive. Um. Uh. Okay. Here's here here's my logic. All right. DC one Ashley was still single, so at least until the very end. So we're gonna go with DC one Ashley for date, and then. By by DC three rolling around, we would have already dated, so we could progress to marriage status. So DC three actually is in marriage. Whoa, you got it all planned <laughs> out. <laughs> I just want to say how that way I won't be cheating on. Ashley. She just got shot down by tranquilizer. She's been abused, and you're like, you know what? I don't think she's worth living over that or two. That's no, very okay. ruthless of you. <gasps> That's not the reason. Oh. All right, all right. Let's move on to the next person. It is Marks. So sorry. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? And I'm gonna chase it. I'm gonna chase it. All right. Yes! Yes! Right. Pop off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of chasing, who do you think out of the DC free? Magenta team would be able to outrun Jensen the most? Ooh, that's a good question. Honestly, and this is going to be a crazy answer, I'd say Fiori. Something about those little legs. Those little legs definitely are able to run a lot faster. Well, that's very interesting because in episode 6, Fiori got shot down by Jensen. But, like, maybe she has <laughs> gotten better in DC Free for running. <laughs> so true, so true. Oh, yeah. Next up, we're gonna have JPEG. Ew. Hello. Oh. All right. So, JPEG, I have a question for you. So, you know that Tess is known for infinitely running glasses. Why did Marcus steal her nice pink glasses? I want you to figure it out. Why? Why did. <laughs> It, Marcus yeah, is, like, it, not, yeah, Marcus is like Medusa. It's like if you look at his eyes, you turn to stone. So, he had to like protect everyone, you know? That's how that's how Anina came to exist. She's a stone version of Fiore's like relative. That's oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> I appreciate your insight. And speaking of insight, we have an other person that part of the proofreading team besides JPEG. They give us insight. Welcome, Tam. Hey guys. <laughs> All right, Tam. This is a very easy one, and I have decided to be nice. In a scale of one oh, to yeah. ten. How hard would you say it is to defend Yule as a person? <laughs> oh my god, right now? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot, god. He, it's about at 100 right now. It's at an all-time high, I will admit. That's very um... <laughs> interesting, Tam, because wouldn't defend I mean... that someone you love be super easy for you and not be a struggle? That is, we're gonna have to How take that you... down for notice Damn. regarding any future endeavors. Yeah. Stop, stop, no, no. <laughs> Your nation, no, <laughs> no, I have call her Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> God, <laughs> I don't know. But you'll definitely, like, he definitely no, has sir. his faults, though, to say the least. Yeah, you will definitely see me still defending him, but you know, just I don't know. <laughs> I got the Yule virus, so it's okay. Now kiss her. Yeah, you did. <laughs> no kiss her. All right. Now we have one more person. It is a special guest. 
This person you may be now known as the voice of Aiden or as a proofreader for DC One and Free. It's Vister. Welcome on board. Hello, everybody. My name is Vister. I'm coming all the way from Melbourne, Australia. It's very nice to meet all of you. And yes, I've been Australian this whole time, and I swear, and I'm not putting on an accent. I swear on everything that this is my natural voice. And in fact, I don't even know how I voice Aiden. It's such a mystery. But hello. It is indeed a big mystery. And it's awesome to hear that we have our second Australian of the podcast. And the last one was literally the last episode. It's definitely exciting. <laughs> yeah. I wish. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was Australian. It's a lie. I know. It's we all is having it. Hunter and Aiden uh, in back to back episodes of the podcast like an inside joke because they just never talk. <laughs> we're, we're yeah, exactly. They have to come at a different time. I don't know someone by that name. Who's who's Hunter? <laughs> oh exactly. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll meet him eventually. Uh oh. Oh no. Well, maybe I'll meet him eventually. Who knows? We might see him again. Today. Don't know. <laughs> Hunter fans are indeed in shambles, as per usual. <laughs> but speaking of shambles, we must now talk about our lovely uh, guest origin. How you got here? So, Weister, take the floor. Okay. Um, so, a bit about me. I've been into everything, like, total drama related since I was a kid. And then from total drama, I be became a survivor. And Big Brother, super fan. I watch every single season, every single um, episode. I even watch international versions of the show. <laughs> That's how crazy I am. Um, I got into... Uh, disventure camp with uh, the beta um, I was very shocked that I watched the first episode and then all of a sudden episodes were coming out like every week which was like one of the most consistent fan made shows that I've ever seen so I stuck with the series and it's very <laughs> it was rough around the edges <laughs> but mm -hmm. I ended up really loving it so I um so it was always like a, a thing that happened. I moved on with my life as as everyone does. But then I saw um, there were character auditions for a second season, which would be called Disventure Camp. So I looked at that and I was like, I was starting to get into voice acting. I started getting, I had like a really good mic and I was auditioning for stuff. And I was like, oh, it would be really, really cool to be a part of this because i I'm a fan of Total Drama, and I, I really liked the first uh, beta season. So I auditioned for um, the only two... I only auditioned for two characters. I would have auditioned for more, but I liked these two the best, and I didn't really want to be anybody else. Um, I auditioned for Hunter and Aiden. And I felt really confident in my Hunter audition, and not in my Aiden audition. And then I didn't think anything of it. And then one day, boom, like Jared contacts me and he's like, yo, we really, we really liked your Aiden. Uh, could you record his lines for episode one? And I was like, oh my gosh, of course. So um, one thing led to another season two. My character Aiden ended up being a lot more important to the story than... Um, I initially thought I was kind of thinking that Aiden, he kind of looked like a main character, but like, I didn't think he could get all the way. But then as I was recording and noticing where his character was going, I was like, oh, you know, I actually may be voicing like someone who wins. And then so get all the way to the final episode. I'm like, I don't win. No, but I got so involved with the community and of this venture camp and like everyone I got to know people. And then I became so invested with the series and like wanting to help like with in like anything I could. So one day I just, it was after uh, season two wrapped up and then season one was announced. I uh, messaged Jobbert. That's what I call them. Jared and Robert Jobbert. And I was like, yo, I have experience with like voice casting. So would y'all be down if I helped cast the English voices of Disventure Cap? And they were like, yeah, okay, sure. 
So <laughs> we ended up making a group chat where we casted all of the English voiced um, contestants from season one. And I felt really like happy about that. And I loved my involvement in the whole process that I further extended that. And I was like, hey, I have some history of proofreading for a series. So I was like, what if I help out with like the scripts or like suggesting stuff or like all that jazz. And then I was invited to be a part of the proofreading team. And ever since then, me, Jace, Tam, JPEG, and Jobbert have all been rigorously um, going back. Uh, we did season one and we are currently doing all stars um, I know everything that's going to happen in All Stars, but again, my lips are sealed, so don't y'all think you can get anything out of me, Immer. Um, <laughs> oh, you say that, but we'll see. There's still a long podcast Watch to go. Out, yeah. You want to know, Easter? You want to know? But yes, that sneaky. is that is the story of Weister. I love the story, oh, though. I love God. how you articulate your... I, mean, there's I also side really liked being this. a beta fan. I was like, wait, one week per episode. I was also shocked too, because it was like, wow, I never get fan shows this fast. I'm used to waiting a year for an oh, episode yeah. of a fan show. It's a super I mean, awesome it was in, it was in Spanish. Yeah, it was in yeah. Spanish. Well, so I have not really connect too much to it, but like, I you know, I can read, so I read the subtitles, and I was like, oh, I like these characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And. and it, I like these characters turned into I'm now working to make these characters better, which was it's just crazy to think about. <laughs> so who was your favorite in the upgrade. beta? Mm. Um, probably <laughs> Miriam. <laughs> she was she was just so ridiculous. And I one once I heard her English voice, I was like, yes, yes. more of that. <laughs> what are you talking about, Jake? <laughs> what are you talking about, jerk? <laughs> the only friend you need. I love Miriam. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember also being really, like, frustrated by the boot order of the beta. I was like, what the hell? Ashley, Gabby, we lost. Mm -hmm. um, Will, uh... Dan left that early, which I didn't really care, but... Uh, <laughs> Damn, <Ash> okay. <laughs> Oop. So, I was going to say that was... right in front of me, huh? All right, that's fine. <laughs> well, I, I heard you have some very controversial opinions, so I hope that we talk about that. <laughs> All right, all right. We'll get to it when we get to it. Good, we'll, great plan, all right. <laughs> we'll have our Dan versus Aiden. We'll have it, we'll have it. Battle yes. of the protagonists. <laughs> the problem is one is successful. Vada, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned that you uh, proofreaded projects in the past. W w what's up with that? Is it like a show or maybe like a, a play or just for fun? Like so I got into proofreading um, through Danganronpa fan series. I was um, a voice actor for a lot of projects. Those projects have now since concluded because most of the time people who take on big projects like that don't really realize that it is such a big commitment. So most, more than not, those fan projects, unfortunately, end up getting canned, um, which I completely understand. Like, it is a really big undertaking. So, like, having, like, that experience, I would r write basically... I wrote an entire trial by myself and I was like, <laughs> like, just like, I really um, put me into the mind of like somebody who like reads scripts and like make sure what characters are saying makes sense, especially when you're writing for murder mysteries. It's, it's really important for what every character says and does. And you have to remember all the, all the details, all the correct details. So I just kind of got a habit for that. And I've, brought some of it to uh the team mm -hmm. it in little shows. ways mm -hmm. wow that is such like interesting experience mm -hmm. yeah i was so proud oh. of it too only for it to be canceled oh my <laughs> gosh oh <laughs> 
Is- I have another question for you because like me and me and Tam were always talking about which lines we personally added and Jace, you know, adds a lot of the lines, but like, out of, you know, out of the lines that you've added, what, what is your personal favorite so far? Yeah, I've added uh, two so far that I'm pretty proud of. That whole scene at the beginning of episode uh, four, was it? Uh, might have been four, might have been three. It's after Lake is eliminated. It's when yeah, it's episode um, four. Yeah, episode four. Um, so originally, Aiden and Tess did not have that scene together. They were well, not in the way that it became. Like it was Aiden confronting Tess, like, "Why did you vote out Lake?" And then Tess is being like, "Well, this is why I voted out Lake." And then that scene just ended there. I was like, "Eh." No. So I went back and I I made it so where Tess actually, you know, feels bad because she has a connection to Lake just like Aiden. Like they're both from they're all from season uh two. So I, I thought it was a good idea to expand both of their characters, just having Aiden become relatable, Tess being like, don't give up on yourself, have confidence. They wouldn't want to see you like that. And I think the scene really landed. And I was pretty proud of that at the end of the day. And I'm definitely glad it became what it was. Um, my second line that I altered, I don't, I say that, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> um, I have to think about that. Um, th- Cause there was one change that I made that I was happy got in, but I don't for the life of me remember what it was. So it's fine though. There's like 21 scripts. So, to keep track of every little line from the early episodes is insanely hard, so I yeah. do not do it all. Do you remember, like, what um, character it was for? Or... Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> all I, I remember, totally feel all that. I remember is that it was, it was a change, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it did happen, and I, for the life of me, cannot remember what it was. Because now, at this point, we have literal hours of... Yeah. Of, of scenes and like yeah. I'm just so shocked by the by the actual length of All Stars so far and we're only on episode 6 right I know <laughs> yeah, we're not even one third of the way done oh boy damn yeah oh my gosh but yeah definitely the original um Tess and Aiden scene um yeah it was like, these scenes, just, like, they need a little bit more of a push, always. Just to make it feel more natural and not so, like, robotic. Like, two robots talking to each other, so... Oh, yeah. yeah I, think I mean, I, definitely... I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I'm no stranger to the fact that, you know, in season two, like, certain characters <laughs> just did not interact, even though yeah. they were in the same camp <laughs> and were in the same game and voting in that same game and having to talk to each other having a social game is very important in that (laughs) same game so having certain characters not talk to each other like was very triggering (laughs) um so i definitely (laughs) wanted to uh (laughs) fix that with uh, tess and aiden yes oh my gosh it definitely showed (laughs) that that moment was so good gosh thanks love how dc free rose on like dc2 a lot of times it's like this is a spoiler for one of the lines but it's not like a huge spoiler it's like tess is like oh i didn't know about you and it's like oh we only talked like two times so of course you probably didn't. probably because you didn't talk to me so go away <laughs> <laughs> the delivery on that was, was so that. good <laughs> it was yes, so good it was so shady right? leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> like, go make out with Hunter. Yeah. Oh wait, he's gone. Oh, oh. <laughs> he took my sunglasses with me. Uh. <laughs> Aiden, baby. I got it. Iconic. I think that's a good transition to talk about the character of Aiden. Unless anyone has any other questions for Vi. So I have a very famous um quote. Where when I first joined the server, I was like, "Why is it? Why is Aiden such a shrimp? I want to dip him in cocktail sauce." <laughs> and I think that summarizes his uh, character in DC too a lot. Um, but over the course yeah. of this season, <laughs> over the course of All Stars, we've seen a lot of changes with him. I would say an evolution where he stops being super like sarcastic and snippy. I don't know if that's for better or for worse. I don't know. A lot of people seem to be divided on that. What do you guys think of uh, Aiden so far? 
Oh my god. I'll let other people well. have their opinions first. <laughs> Emer. <laughs> I think Aiden this season has a good benefit in terms of his interactions with specifically Ellie in terms of like their rivalry like that's like some of my most favorite Aiden event, is like how he's like always going back against so he's like um you can't trust Ellie she's a snake from last season like stuff like that I really enjoy with Aiden's character because he's very like feisty and it's not like just like watered down like TikTok you'll love him but like he actually has like and like see that he has watched the show before and i do like love how also like like he's having like maybe like one of the most popular like dc1 dc2 interactions because with tom it's like such an interesting like plot choice i kind of like it like i feel like Mm -hmm. it works really well with an aiden's character and also like eight different benefits also in the story factor in terms of like the whole lake and aiden for like episode uh, one, two, and three they had. So I think Aiden, so far, like, they used the DC2 Foundation and actually made him into a character I can actually enjoy now, and I'm very happy about that. Perfectly said. Yeah. I, I feel I feel the same. Like, I feel like Aiden right now is a lot more reasonable than he was in DC2. Um, and he feels, like, more just, like, chilled out because of, like, you know, he got the boy, so it's 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 all good. And, like, yeah, to keep it spicy, his whole arc with Tom right now, it's pretty, it's pretty entertaining, so, um, in DC2, I was a little, I was very wishy-washy on him as a whole, um, (laughs) yeah, he was just, like, he's so emotional sometimes, and then, like, that one time when, with the voting and everything, him throwing his vote, I was like, oh my god, Aiden, like, oh my god, just stop, Stop being mad all the time, but um, he was he was cute though. I still appreciate him, and I appreciate him a lot more now. So, um, and definitely, <laughs> I I still love Jaden, but being without James right now is definitely helping his um, overall character. So, um, yeah, I like the little. Notice guy. how Pam's upside for him was he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a... interject with that anyway. <laughs> I do not have a crush on Aiden. No. <laughs> you know, well, it's on your list. Who's so. next, Tam? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who is next, Tam? Like the list Who is, is like the whole chat page long. With the whole freaking cast. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I okay, so when I got Aiden, I was like, okay, like cool. Like, he seems interesting enough. Maybe a little bit of a a drama queen, he looks like. (laughs) So I just kind of went, when I was starting voicing him, I almost gave him, like, this really emo-y voice, which I am so glad I did not do, because he is not that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and, And, like, voicing Aiden has been such a treat, because... The, the the range of emotions that he shows just in like a span of one episode can go from zero to a hundred <laughs> and i love being mad as aiden because aiden has a really like soft like sweet voice normally and when he gets mad it just turns full like grungy like oh you mess with the wrong bitch now and it's just like <laughs> i i love when aiden is mad <laughs> which is probably toxic as like a, as like a character standpoint I'm like i love when you're mad yeah it's really really <laughs> great but um yeah i mean seeing that whole like i used to not really love Jaden as like a concept mm-hmm. because i thought episode three was very weird and intrusive of aiden's privacy but mm-hmm. ever since then like it's been a roller coaster pretty much and i'm i'm very happy with where it landed they just seem like such a natural couple now and i'm very much like oh hold on sorry someone else take over my hubby is very solid oh jenna says you want to take over Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> expecting tam to come in with that <laughs> Oh my god, it just jumped out you of me. You always... 
<laughs> always expect him to come with the hubby. <laughs> yeah, you're right. My bad. So my true. bad. <laughs> She, she, she's what? bound to be saying it a lot with you, so it's okay. <laughs> oh God! And I mean, I would love, I would love, love. Well, I just want to know what everybody else. I want to know what everybody else thinks. Uh, comparatively, in just this season, excluding season two, Aiden's relationship with Tom versus James. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Ooh, where, juicy. where are we feeling with? their interactions um i mean i prefer tom tom din as a as a as just platonic and i prefer Jaden in this season as purely romantic <laughs> in my opinion because <laughs> Jaden's I mean, really a, healthy this I, time I around like that's, a, that's a great answer i i, I kind of meant not in terms of like uh romantic but like in terms of a dynamic Oh, I'm smart. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was about to <laughs> ship. I thought we were oh. coming in straight with the with the, <laughs> with the Tom, <laughs> Tom Den version. No, no. I'm, not, I'm, not necess- I'm not necessarily a Tom Den shipper, okay. but I feel like Tom Den's dynamic mm-hmm. has been really solid this season. Like they're very two, obviously. As a queer person myself, I know a lot of the times people love to just see two queer people and ship them together. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of in love with the idea of two queer people who are not even slightly romantically interested in each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you talking about their relationship is still positive? Yes, absolutely. I agree. And I do agree. I feel like it's so stereotyped that just because people are gay that they should be like like showing interest in each other but like i've really liked this is a controversial opinion but i've really liked uh tom and aiden's dynamic this season it feels like and someone on someone on twitter said this and i'll be i'll be stealing this but they feel like like brothers like tom is like the older brother and aiden's just kind of like the rugrat little brother but i really do like their dynamic of like you know, they're the only guys on their team. <laughs> like, Aiden's definitely been in that situation before. But they're the only guys on their team. Like, like Tom catches all the food. Aiden helps out with, like, the traps and stuff. Like, they, like, Aiden tries to give him advice of, like, oh, like, we should vote for Ellie because you, she, you don't fall for this. Ellie's done this to you before. You've wanted Ellie out. And, um, yeah, I'm very. <laughs> I love that it's triggering, Jake. But <laughs> that's uh, another discussion. Mm. Okay. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> what, do you have opinions on that? We'll, we'll get oh, to it. Oh, let's hear Genesis' opinion. We'll get to the. No, we'll we'll get to it. We will get to it. We will one hundred percent. Wait, 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 wait. Why do I feel like this is gonna be the podcast first five v one? I'll be. I'll be. Oh I'll be God, off I'll be by alone. saying. I'll start off by saying that I I should probably like delve into that. I'm not the biggest fan of Jake, at least not in these early episodes. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. So, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. As much as I joke, I respect everyone's opinion on this, but oh boy, we're, we're gonna get into some things. Ooh, uh, after me hearing your opinion of Ashley, yeah, we're gonna get into it. <laughs> okay, all right, listen. Ignore what everyone else is saying. Everyone just love. Everyone here just loves. I do not have a crush on Ashley. I want to make that clear. <laughs> not a crush, but I heard you don't like Ashley. What? When? Oh. oh no. We're, we're all not just saying. Who framed your girl? Who framed me? No. <laughs> what? Oh, so you do like Ashley? <laughs> like, like as as. Like platonically, yeah. Like, like she's not like. Of, of course, I'm not gonna say yeah. that you're in love with Ashley. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everything's platonic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Ashley. She's cool. She's a great character. Yeah. Who, okay. who said I hate what, Ashley? What about Ellie? Well, okay. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Because I that's really, kind of really I really, really, really like Ellie. So. Yeah, Woo! yeah. No, like, yeah. I mean, like, oh, wait, that's gonna be a. I understand everyone's free. point for know. liking Ellie, yeah. but we. Ooh, ooh, okay. Ooh, the church, right. of, the church of Genesis doesn't like Ellie. 
<laughs> you know, just you know, there's a lot that's like you know, like like the tea kettle's boiling. You know, it's. Mm. Mm. I, I I can see where you're coming from, especially after this episode where what she just did. Yeah, that exactly. just made no, me no. like her more, honestly. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. I'm just saying. I get I'm why people hypocrite. like. I like her more for being a hypocrite because she's more entertaining. Yes. Uh, <sighs> indeed. I get why people like her. DC we'll three L is miles shit. ahead of uh, DC one LA, and it's not even a competition. She's miles ahead of DC One LA. I do not agree with that, but <gasps> pop off like that. I will have oh to think God. about that Passion. because that is a strong statement. <laughs> uh, Genesis no. is like trying to pop the tires of our opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, okay, like, okay, mm, mm, okay. <laughs> oh, um, revving up. Ah! <laughs> they, they talk <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to hold myself back right now. Like, so, so why don't we jump into the uh, the episode? Why don't we jump yes. into the episode? Episode six. We'll do a quick episode sure. review. We can spoil. I, I thought about it. I was like, why are we not spoiling? Because we can spoil. It's like, if you're watching this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Three, two, one. Connor's eliminated. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. What? So Rio didn't first. save me. <laughs> We're gonna review the episode. Give it a rating out of ten. Who wants to start? I mean, I'll go ahead and start. I'll, I'll, I'd love to kick it off. Yes. Um, yes. Everybody knows me to be a, be a very easy critic. I'm very easy to love. I love DC too, so that's how you know I'm easy. So I'm going <laughs> to give this episode a, <laughs> I'm gonna give this episode a 10 out of 10. I definitely feel like everything in this episode was not only prime character development, but like... I don't want to say fan service because I don't think it was fan service. I think it's what the fans wanted to see and what DC was able to deliver in terms of what the fans wanted to see. And I love that. I love that about the show. I love that about the writing. And I think that's what really drew me into Disventure Camp as a community. Um, the writing style in that sense and regard. So 10 out of 10 for me. Who's next? Can I, pay, can I piggyback off of that? <gasps> <Not that. laughs> yeah um same same rating honestly 10 out of 10 this episode had it all i mean i feel like everyone had something to do this episode like no one was like shafted like because this was such a team oriented challenge like everyone got to do something everyone got to sing be on stage have the camera flash on them and even when they weren't singing like the moments like fiore going to marcus of all people to ask for his help like the whole yule and gret uh emily earphone scene like you know trevor and derek being trevor and derek you know crystal with her puns like connor not understanding the puns like alec being like all right i need to choose between uh connor and the villains alliance and then um but i stole that voice completely from the uh, Disventure Cat parody <laughs> voiceover, which is my favorite parody <laughs> series of in the in the entire world, maybe. But we can talk about that later. Yeah, everyone had something to do this this episode. Love the interactions. Like obviously, as a very music musically oriented person, loved this challenge. Loved how everyone sounded. Um, yeah, loved this episode. This was a very le- there was a very high anticipated episode, and it was worth it. The awesome. about five special episodes this season there's there's like four more special episodes coming. yeah soon. there are very 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 big episodes coming like that has the same gravitas as like the musical challenge there are there are there are big episodes and there are also cool down episodes in my opinion mm-hmm. would you would you agree with that uh jay oh that's me Oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. There's a lot. There's a lot like in the immediate future, and I'm very. I don't want to say the exact numbers, but it's it's happening sooner than you think. We spaced them out pretty well, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty good. Um, spaced yeah, them we, out. We definitely yeah. spaced them out well. Yeah. So, so, so it's not going to be like episode six, and the epic thing happens like episode eighteen. It's like you, you don't need to wait that long. It'll yeah. When's the next big episode? Ooh, I, s- uh, I don't think. That's when- for us to know. <laughs> we'll find out. It's, yeah, it's for Damn us to know. <laughs> I think I know the number. I gotta check. This book. I think I did accidentally tell Emer the number, but it's fine. You did? Oh. You did no. tell me the number. I was like, why are you giving me this info? It's between 7 and 11. That's that's the number you're looking for. There. That's the lucky 11. number. 
Duly noted. Rubs hands together. All right. <laughs> but yeah, right now. that that was my rating. Ten out of ten. Love this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, uh, uh, the lovely song piggyback. I'm a piggyback on that rating. Ten out of ten. <laughs> I love this episode. All the character interactions, they feel so fresh and like warm. Like every character you can mention them, it's like, yeah, they did this and this and this. Like even the production people, like like even though they didn't have much good, um every little thing with them was enough to like say, I love this direction of this character. I love this direction. But, like such a well connected episode. It's like you can't really criticize it. There's nothing to really criticize because like everything that I've wanted is desired within the characters that I have for. I think that's why I really have to give this episode the perfect rate in. As a Marcus and Nina enjoyer, specifically a Nina enjoyer, this episode was amazing, just in that of itself. And Nina being like, I don't like her. She reminds me of my sister. I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. Nina will always be the disventure queen. Real. So real. Yeah, no, so just to copy the last three people, I'm also going to piggy piggyback off of these people. Um, I'm going to try to say piggy something that back. Well, yet. Won't you piggy piggyback off this piggyback? <laughs> <laughs> won't you? I can't sing. Will you? Um, but, um, so, you know, we have the podcast. We haven't been very kind to the host plot, but I do think that for this, this is the first episode, hopefully it continues going forward, that the host plot is actually super interesting. Um, I personally didn't skip the scenes for once. It was actually very, uh, very fun. Oh my god, you were skipping the scenes? You monster. Yeah. <laughs> I think all of us, we, except dang. for Marks, we kind of like skimmed through it. But um, no, we, I actually enjoyed it this episode. It was great. Um, I'm also just in a good mood because episode five was, that's the big love triangle episode. I've been waiting for that since DC2. So, yeah, you, know, you contributed heavily. You contributed heavily to that episode. Class yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, even even though um, Ali and Tess are not the stars of this episode, it, you know, it's fine. It's like all all the characters are the stars <laughs> in this episode, and I think it's awesome. It's the first episode I agree. where I feel like everyone got a good amount of screen time. But yeah, uh, ten out, sorry, I didn't give it a ranking. 10 out of 10, just like everyone else. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna I'm feeling quite good right now. I feel like now. Jenny Benny has some words, so why don't you go next time? <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, okay, piggyback, um, I'm not about to sing, but, um, yeah, I would also agree, 10 out of 10, um, the production and the theme of this episode, it's been, it's, it's the best yet, so, I just, I really enjoyed the songs, and, like, I felt like it was, like, a perfect balance between, like, for the screen time, between all the teams, so, I really appreciated that, um, yeah, that's all I can really say. Everything has been said. It's just perfect. Oh, the mic ain't picking up my claps. Oh, well. Clap, clap, <laughs> clap, clap, clap. clap, clap. Okay. Wait, are these sarcastic claps? No! Oh! The- oh! Sarcastic- <laughs> no, okay. I know what I said earlier in, in, the, in the podcast. Uh, I was actually kind of being a little bit ironic. To be honest, this episode... I don't know. It there was just something about. It. I'm just kidding. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be worried there for a second. <laughs> right, I was like, <gasps> Jenny, I give this episode. It's gonna be boring. Everyone's give... like agreeing. We need to fight. Right. I give this episode like a solid, like everyone else. I give this episode a nine point nine out of ten. Um, and... You ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Quirky. Um. And this to me, okay, I, I I need to go on a little ramble about this episode. All right, this to me felt like the first episode that really felt like an all star season. In the like uh, the first episode was kind of everyone coming together, so it felt like an all star season. But it wasn't the game, right? This is the first episode that really felt like all stars in the game. Everyone, ev- oh shit, I hit my microphone. Um, <laughs> Everyone from the previous seasons joining forces to make this, like, beautiful, beautiful season. And this, to me, really felt like that. This, to me, was what Total Drama... Miles above what Total Drama All-Stars wished it could be. Like... (laughs) (laughs) And, and it like, the music was good. All of the character... Well, most of the character interactions were good. There's a reason why it it took 0.1 off. 
Um, oh, most of the character interactions were good. A lot of the drama was really good. Um, <laughs> the outfits were great and crazy. It was. It just felt fun. It felt so fun. I love this episode. So yeah, that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> nine point nine out of ten for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nine point nine eight three average is insanely good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to say like a, it's like very amazing still because this episode definitely like it had like pretty much almost everything like top notch amazing. So it was like it yeah. definitely deserves its high rate in this time. Oh, I will say okay. The reason why I took zero point one off was uh well. I, I, I didn't take – if I took anything off of Ellie's thing, it would have been, like, 0 0.05. Because I, I think Ellie's a great character. I just don't like her. So <laughs> um, it was mostly just for, like – it was mostly for – well, okay. So I will agree with what JPEG said about the host plot scenes not being that bad. Um, I, I, I especially really like a lot of Emily and Yule stuff, but, like, the stuff with, like, Derek and Crystal, uh, uh, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> aside from that, and aside from, like, me just not really, like, uh, feeling, um, me, me not feeling the whole, like, Jake getting jealous th th thing, like just keep on happening over and over and I, I yeah um those are like so minor nitpicks though <laughs> in in the grand scheme of things um so yeah 9.9 .9 out of 10 for me that's definitely valid though yeah <laughs> i um, i would actually agree like uh, <laughs> are you bringing your score down to 9.9 yeah. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny's, is because okay. I have to admit, originally in my notes, I did have like a nine, also as well. I had it like eight point uh, five. Peer pressure. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, I, was realizing, I had my notes nine point eight. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> you know, it's wow. like coming out. <laughs> it's Howard. getting worse and worse. <laughs> it was because of some of the lines that I just like felt yeah, on, like on, on my like, on my notes. I had a two, but. I <laughs> <laughs> This, this is like actually a 12 angry men. I round it up because I was like, it deserves a roundup, even though it's like not perfect, perfect. It's yeah, like perfect right. enough to where it's like, this is an all stars episode I can enjoy and be happy about with no any. Yeah, exactly. I will fully admit I'm 100% nitpicking. <laughs> and, and most of my issues with it are just personal things, not even really like any writing decisions. Like, for me, writing was like impeccable this time. <laughs> uh, aside from like, like some awkward stuff that really shouldn't even be an issue. <laughs> yeah, like, anything issues with me was a personal, too. I was like, eh, like, I'm so seen. Mm, yeah. For, like, one little dialogue. Like, it's nothing that big, so it's like, it's why it's a 10. Exactly. But I actually do like the Emily and Yule stuff, mainly because it involves a contestant, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Take that easy one. <laughs> Production plus contestants, that's, like, the perfect formula. Like, every yeah, fan right? loves that. Yeah. Look at Lake and Crystal. <laughs> And it's Yule. Like, that's, that's, yes, that's Yule. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can't hit Yule unless you're Twitter who wants like, to cancel him every day. Like, look, no offense, but if it was Aiden and Emily, it wouldn't be nearly as Oh my fun. god, yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, I've been, I've been such a Yule enjoyer this season. <laughs> simply because what he brings is so unique. And yes, what he brings, and that uniqueness is like terrible. And him just body shaming and being horrible every single second. But, I mean, when you have a show about drama and, like, someone is stooping that low in the drama while everyone else is at least being cordial and, like, not, like, you, obviously they're not shaming anyone, they're not discriminating anyone. It's, like, it's kind of nice to have a character like that. I mean, I, I don't, listen, I don't want to get canceled, but <laughs> I enjoy you all Join the club. for what he brings. To add to that, yeah, to add to that. <laughs> For one thing, uh, to add to that, I will say, well, for one thing, uh, like, we all love Yule, but not for those reasons, obviously. Yes, yes. Um, 
But uh, I was going to nope. say, there's a reason why um, <laughs> episodes like six through, I, I think like nine or something like that, weren't the most favored by even DC2 fans because there really wasn't anyone filling in the gap of an antagonist at that time because you just left. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. See, I'm actually, as somebody who very much likes DC2, I really felt that the episode after he left, which was the merge episode, I thought it was a really nice episode because oh, it had okay. everyone coming together and like we hadn't seen them, especially with like, you know, the, the Hunter click and like the, mm-hmm. the, the James Aiden Lake click. Like we see those, those two groups finally come together and like just enjoy the day off that Crystal yeah. gives them. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really nice season. And I think with the absence of an antagonist, it, it just hypes up the uh incoming antagonist which it was a little bit of a slow burn i'm not gonna lie because every <laughs> good every good season of survivor needs a needs a good antagonist but i'm so glad that that role was usurped by the one and only Rhea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes i can uh, i can appreciate everything that you all brings to a, a season of this venture camp and especially right, yeah. now mm-hmm. And I will say I did enjoy the the middle DC two episodes, but I know I know a lot of people weren't fans. Um, looking at a certain oh, yeah. stuff, I swear <laughs> in here, yeah, people who make oh, yeah. who make like five hour retrospectives on DC two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I will um, say, yeah, yeah, it does kind of the eliminations of of just the episodes of uh, of Lake Tess and and Allie leaving was a little bit of a bumpy road. I'm not gonna lie, like. Oh, that really stung when all three of them left when kind of a whimper. But oh, yeah. like, I think the season really does pick up af- at the final uh, five, which is not I totally again, agree. not a- not ideal. But glad we glad we had it. Those are my favorite episodes yeah. in DC two for sure. Yeah. yeah, we lost the plot, but we got it back eventually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had the plot, we lost it. We had it again with the pre merge. We lost it again with the with, with the beginning of the merge. We got it back with the with the end yeah. game. I will not elaborate why. It's so it's messy. I love it. When it was said in the retrospective, stays in the retrospective. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're um, gonna... yeah let's, look, let's leave it behind. John for therapy already. Yeah. Yeah, so um, if we're all done with reviewing the episode, why don't we get into the scene by scene analysis? If we're all in. Let's yeah. do it. I really couldn't agree more. I yeah. really couldn't agree more. So uh, I don't really I... want to focus on the recap too much, but. Crystal drops two of the greatest memes in, like in a row, pretty much. Yes. yes. I talk about it. I was goodbye, shook. Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> it's so close to the end, but not really. Oh my god, <laughs> that killed me. I love that. Oh my god, oh, goodness, it. so good. <laughs> we, we love our adventure memes. Line. We love our adventure <laughs> memes. See, look, look, we're we're holding on a treasure trove of memes. We we've like spread them out throughout the whole season. It's like you just gotta be patient, all right? We're not, we're not gonna, we didn't forget Lone Ranger. It's still there. <laughs> well, no, she calls him a Lone Ranger at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, yeah, yeah, no. but it's a no, reminder. It's, um, that, yeah. We're sprinkling the memes, you know, all throughout the seasons, you know. Yeah. We're not going to be like, oh, you're a shrimp. Oh, Neom, oh, I'm a walrus. You know, like, <laughs> that'd be weird. Neom. 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 We still need you to do that. <laughs> so, uh. Neom. <laughs> uh, anyway, the first scene of the episode, Emily and Yule, who wants to talk about that? Uh, Marks? I would love to, I would love to open up I was up about this to say. Because, yes! So, I, I, obviously, I get asked a ton of times, like, do you like voicing a problematic character? And the answer is, sort of, kind of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to piggyback, of, piggyback off of what somebody said earlier, um, in that... This isn't total drama. This is disventure camp. And I think Yule brings the dis in disventure. He brings the sort of like, uh, yuck, kind of energy yes. to the season. Yes. And I, agree. I love and, and that. And brings the vent. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so having this scene is so important to Yule as a developer character because Yule is clearly the uh, air quotes comedic relief like you like to laugh at him not really with him but this scene really gives him a sort of depth uh, not very much because he doesn't deserve that but a depth to him 
and I love that. Yeah. Popped off. <laughs> yeah, as you said, you said it perfectly. Like, Yule brings, like, this, the an energy we haven't seen before. Like, yeah, it's it's not good energy, but, like, you secretly, like, were, and, like are, like, when watching Yule, you're like, what is he going to say next? Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> what what am I gonna absolutely gasp at the next time this man <laughs> speaks? And I will he, say. Yeah. Oh. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, as someone who didn't like DC Two Two Yule, the main reason why I didn't like him was because there wasn't. I could tell that like um, the writers were like really trying to hit that balance, or that not necessarily that they were trying, but they wanted a, sort of a balance between. Uh, or at least the ideal Yule would have been like a balance between like, um, I, I I guess like funny or like goofy with like this extremely problematic mean piece of shit, you know. <laughs> um, and to me, DC two Yule kind of <laughs> leaned way too far on, on um, you know, the problematic piece of shit part and not enough on the funny goofy part. Um, but that was rectified in DC three. Like DC three Yule is the perfect Yule, and I love everything about. Well, <laughs> I love what, what he brings. To- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Yule reacts a lot more in in DC three, which which I think makes him a lot better. Because instead of like just yeah. saying shit out of nowhere, he's like reacting to a lot of the exactly. stuff that happens, and it's just mm-hmm. like yeah. Because like for example, when somebody votes for him, what? What? And he just freaks out and like <laughs> our parrot him him say yes parrot you when he like says to connor like oh just you wait and he like points his finger in his face i'm just like yes you will <laughs> go <Yeah>. off <laughs> i love yeah <laughs> you you could have used some of that energy yeah <laughs> yes I'm the one with the Gilbert Godfrey impression. Like, come on. Yeah, man. that's true. You know what? You know, why, why don't you show it? Because, like, I feel like most of us haven't heard it before. Why don't you show it now? I... <laughs> You're gonna pay for that. Just you wait, Connor. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, my, oh my God. God. I, I want to make it clear. Wow. I want to make it clear. I heard about the impression, like, people movies. mention it, but, like, damn, it's oh. so good when you Yo. hear it. For context, during the DC One table reads, we had the writers come on for one of them, and Vi just comes out with a Gilbert Godfrey impression for... Did you do it for Fiore, or you did it for Miriam? I don't remember. I did it. I think I did it for Ellie, actually. Oh! (gasps) Oh, I remember that! Gilbert, because then she turned into a zombie, and it was like, come join the club as a zombie! (laughs) Gilbert Godfrey, Ellie! Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. It was that <laughs> session was recorded. It was so good. That was oh, very funny. God. Everyone just kept switching characters. <laughs> <laughs> that was very fun. Oh, I love that. Um, but yeah, um Speaking of Disney, you will call Great Winnie the Pooh. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Nice thing. Out of pocket, I, but that's what I, we love honestly, about it. Honestly, it's so out of pocket, but in the grand scheme of Yule. Is that really the worst insult he's given? <laughs> oh, I God, so Mars in hell. Oh, uh, no. In hell. Right. The bar is the... in hell. The bar is <laughs> in hell. <laughs> God dang. Wait, what, what, what's, what's worse, though? I actually thought this was, like, the worst. Like, what's worse than this? You think? Um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like you could, you could... You could justify that somebody be like, oh, Winnie the Pooh is such a lovable, adorable character. Like, yeah. everybody loves Winnie the Pooh. Commenting on somebody's thunder thighs. Like, that's... Yeah, that I, was pretty I, rough. I feel like that one is definitely worse. I would agree. This time, he's uh-huh. just being Thunder's a nasty good. bitch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God. When he's not dissing on somebody for, for like, race-related reasons. And, like, <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, like... God dang it. it. Don't so, like take me. for that as you will. Oh, and then he's yeah, like, don't don't, we'll ever... don't let me in with that disgusting crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know if we'll ever beat the a Latina stealing. <laughs> I am not surprised. Like, I just don't ever think we'll get past that. When you were called Tom a pig and everyone was making memes about it, I was like, oh, it's not going to age well in two episodes. <laughs> he's going to call someone else a pig and it'll be way worse. Oh god! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> 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 
If I remember, like it was a lot worse, but we we cut it back a little bit, right, Tam? You were the one who kind of like restricted that a little bit. Yes. Yeah, because at that point it was like, oh my god. You yeah, it was, like it was, it, it, it was, was a lot. lot. Yeah, I was acting as his PR manager. I was like, enjoy. God dang it! <laughs> like, I, I'm like genuinely surprised that like it took four. Like Yule was fine for the first four episodes. Like he still mm-hmm. said nasty stuff, but it wasn't like crossing the line. Yeah, because um, I feel like in the original draft, it was like immediate, like right off the bat, he's already super nasty. Yeah, but, you know, we waited four episodes to really dig deep. Yeah, wait, actually, you know what? Okay, my head canon now is that Tam is is Yule's PR manager. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> the person that Emily right. called was it, Tam. <laughs> She's also the ex who got plastic surgery. In, uh, <laughs> yes, unfortunately. <laughs> I claim that too. <laughs> yeah, no, like when I was like reading these episodes, I was. <laughs> it's so wrong, but I was waiting on that nastiness to come, like, cause I was so. Because, like, those moments with, like, Gruel and everything, like, and Yul being all, like, nice and stuff, I was like, oh my god, Yul, this we is like, not you, this is just we, a phase. As somebody who <laughs> watches, like, <laughs> Big Brother and, like, someone who loves drama, like, mm-hmm. oh, man, Yul just, like, hits that spot of just drama, yes. drama, drama. Yeah, oh my gosh. And I'm glad that with this particular duo, Emily finally has something to do. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, this is good Emily. Yes, I love her, like, personality coming out. It's just, ooh, it's so sassy. I love for it. Me, for me, the joy of this scene was, in a sense, giving Yule a Jiminy Cricket storyline. Um, I feel like that's something that needs to happen, especially because later in the episode we see how it isn't like him trying to be a better person. It's him trying to get out of a situation by faking being a better person <laughs> that makes this such a different, unique Jiminy Cricket kind of situation, which is what I absolutely love. You know, exactly. you know what I'm going to compare that to? Oh, sorry. Go on. I think I know what you're going to say. Lander. Go, go ahead. You go know ahead, what I'm going to say. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say. I'm going to compare oh. this to Puss in Boots 2. Yes! Jack Corner. Jack Corner. <laughs> yes. Perfect comparison. <laughs> Love him. Yeah, this is, I'm they, not going to lie. I thought you were going to compare it to Fruity Pinocchio. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? Oh my oh god. My god. Okay, well, <laughs> that too. That's so me. <laughs> that was, that was, that's a Father. close contender. But I... It's kind of because that scene also played sort of as like a um, as a spin on the whole Jiminy Cricket story uh, or the whole Pinocchio story um, in um, in a way that I feel like this scene also played into. And <laughs> also Yule Horner is the funniest image <gasps> in my mind. Yule um, Horner. I- oh, my God. <laughs> Please, uh, someone but yeah, that. no. <laughs> Not Jack Yule. <gasps> Jack Yule. Jack Yule. Jack Yule. Jack Yule. <laughs> it's actually kind of catchy in a way. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Shoot, I lost the my fans. Are off. like, you're a monster. And it was like, what oh, took you so oh, long? Yeah. What took you so long? <laughs> Tam, what is taking you so long? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I a, a whole season and six episodes already come on yo <laughs> Tam's like I can fix him guys I can fix god <laughs> after this guys I'm struggling oh my god Tam is <laughs> fine we're the <laughs> the bar is in hell all of this Ex- by the way, extremely risky play for Jobber to put an f bomb in the first like three minutes of the episode. I thought like I thought YouTube get super mad at them. Oh my <laughs> god! Like, monetization <laughs> purposes. Yeah, that oh, caught me off so guard. Weird. I think, I think maybe they had enough Patreon supporters that they were like, screw it. Hey, <laughs> screw it. <laughs> uh, did I say the f bomb? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I do remember that. I I was gonna <laughs> like I am really shocked every time Jobbert asks me to curse because I really I forget that this isn't a, a children's programming. So I mean obviously I, I, I say a bunch of problematic shit, but you know bad jokes exist in our children's programming too. So but I just get I get shocked every time. Sorry. I want to no, ask. I mean you're good. You you're good. Marks has anyone has any like fan DM'd you and been like why are you so mean? What are you doing? Why are you saying all that stuff? No. 
I will say I am I am genuinely blessed by the support that the fans give because every time yeah. I see somebody being like, Yule is such a nasty, disgusting, awful character. <laughs> but I like his voice actor. And I'm just like, oh, well, you know what? That's great. Good enough for me. You continue to trash that man. He's awful. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Some I get so lucky. <laughs> it's the oh same gosh. thing with me, though, because, like, you know, I see a whole bunch of, like, Wow, Dan is such like a boring ass nothing character. He's just, like a plain bagel. But I really like his voice actor. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Exactly. That's all you need is a resume <laughs> booster. He <laughs> sounds like the Burger King foot like. lettuce guy. Yeah. <laughs> Burger King yes. foot lettuce. <laughs> Ooh, foot fungus. Burger King. <laughs> Burger King, <laughs> oh my God. Burger King foot lettuce. Um, okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Emily and uh, Yule. Yeah, that's a wrap on them. So the next scene, if we're moving on, is um, it's Ashley and Allie in the morning, and also Jake and Fiore there, and they kind of don't really talk about anything. They're just like, "Hey, let's go for a walk." Okay, and Jake makes a funny joke. <laughs> oh, what I will say is that Jake talks about why Hunter was voted out. So I'm just like, guys, just wait one more episode. We'll explain why Hunter got voted out. Just, just wait, please. Did he though? Logic like, still flawed. He, I know he <laughs> says. I know he says that he voted out Hunter for his game, but I don't think he really. S- oh wait, no, he did. He was like Tess, uh, Ali, and Hunter would be too strong, which like I get, but also like there are also three people in a cast of eighteen. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> right. But yeah. I, I do get where he's coming from. Yeah. Anything I do kind of feel like it was a bad move. For strategy. So when he thinks, mm. or like he's like ten percent there, that's like an amazing accomplishment. We got to like hype him up there, even though he has oh. not realized all the little holes he has made with that move. But you know what? For Jake, he's thinking, and that is like a huge upgrade from DC ones. I actually, it. I actually defend the the hunter vote because. I like when people think proactively in the game. Like, yeah, they could have voted out Fiore, but also, like, their positioning on the team is so much better with Fiore compared to with Hunter. Because if they ever do uh, lose again, like, if they had Hunter, it would just be a 2 2 tie. And, like, who knows what would happen. But with Fiore, it's more, like, it's more malleable. Like, you can, there are more things you can pull off. Like, Jake and Ashley are, a, are the solid duo. And um, getting Ali and Fiore to vote together would be extremely like hard compared to if Al- if Hunter was still there because he would vote with Ali. So I defend that move all the time, and people are like, "Well, why didn't you just get Fiore?" And I was like, "Think of the long term. If you're yeah. Ashley and Jake, this is what you do to better your 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 chances in the game." Yeah, no, I agree entirely. Like, keeping Fiore was like the move they should do, but they should have voted out Allie because then Hunter and Fiore, oh, they'd be screwed working together. They wouldn't even work with each other. They would pivot to take each other out. Like, that's how bad their chemistry is. I think Allie was needed for the plot to defend it, like saying, like, it's just a plot thing. Deal in the end of the day. Like, is it flawed with that? Like, it should be Allie going home in a most strategic sense or. But Hunter had the go regarding like the whole episode pace and not even just the episode pacing, but especially in the scene with Allie and Ashley immediately follow like on their walk. I I genuinely feel like this is a perfect example of everybody's gameplay is different and benefits them based on their style of gameplay. Like what you one could make an argument that it would be smarter to keep Hunter, Ali, and Tess as a bigger threat and target moving into the finale or into not the finale into the merge. But uh, what I do think is I think that in terms of uh, Ashley and Jake's gameplay, which is largely a social gameplay, not a strategic gameplay that they are able to mend a bridge with Ashley. And instead of using that trio as a shield, use Ashley as an asset and other people like Fiore wouldn't have done that. Fiore would have used Ashley and Hunter as a shield. Ashley and Jake. Do you mean, um, do you mean have... Allie? Oh yeah, sorry. The A's get me really confused. Uh, Fiore would have used a- uh, Allie and Hunter and Tess as a shield, but uh, Ashley would use Allie as an asset and get rid of Hunter so that she has a number on her side. And I think that's the difference in their <laughs> style of gameplay which I really love because it gives a lot more agency to Ashley and even Jake, who a lot of people aren't giving enough credit to at this point in the game. 
Mm. And I, that, that strategy was also used in, in DC too. like keep the bigger person around because they'll get targeted over you. We Hunter said it himself. The only reason he was working with Yule was because he knew people would vote you out over, over them, over the three. And once he left, we saw that they instantly got targeted. So I'm all in favor of, of using that kind of strategy, especially like in games like this. Piggy, piggy back. Ouch. Dang. Just make me piggy back or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Having you all uh, say piggy, piggy back, won't you piggy? <laughs> no, yeah, no. Uh, those are the two like, the, 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 the two, like thematic things of the season. P- and like religious image for some reason. Like, in this episode, uh, Trevor gets called Jesus again. It's kind of interesting. Oh my god. Uh, I, can I just say, I really freaking love Derek this season. <laughs> Yeah, his, like, dry... get called Jesus. Oh, sorry, go ahead. His dry humor, <laughs> Derek, is just so amazing. Like, and he's like, I'm literally gonna kill myself. I know, and he's... <laughs> God. No, Derek, so I, mean, I mean, Noah, to- TDI Noah has just always, he's just has that, like, mm-hmm. like, a uh, stark oh. humor, where he could just say something, and it just you know, sounds completely out of pocket. Yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> when he was like, no, no, Trevor, that's not dancing, you're having a seizure. <laughs> just like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of knowing TDI Noah for about, like, six or seven years now, and just, like, <sighs> seeing his snark come out in in Derek is just so amazing. I just feel like he was honestly born to play Derek. Like, I really do. I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, I do love like the the VAs for the hosts are like having so much fun with this. Like it, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's super cute. Yeah. It's very evident too. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, JPEG. I do want to. I do want to say JPEG. Uh, I know I said Trevor didn't get called Jesus. It's because I just love that he ref- like. He heard Jesus and knew what he, they were talking about, or just wanted to assume that they were talking about. I love that. That to me <laughs> gives so much more to his character and him as just like an app. Like, oh, silly Billy just does so good at it. I just I love him so much. <laughs> yeah, I was so happy because that, that was my line. I was like, uh, Emily's like Jesus Christ, and I'm like, wait, what if Trevor says you called? <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> just <laughs> clever, like that was the most clever line I feel of the episode. Like him, that's a reference to a previous episode to a previous callback. Just so yes. good. Loved it's it. Like, I didn't get it right away. Weird. The first but then Jesus I... reference was unintentional. Like I think no or Stephen or whatever said like the original line was Jehovah's Witness, but he said Jesus Christ instead. <laughs> yeah, I think that worked better. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so about this beautiful moment. Jesus, really. <laughs> silly Billy it's just silly 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 G. silly G. I love that the I love that the pelvis thrust returns yes yes that was great um yes. but yeah just to wrap up the Ashley and Allie scene Allie doesn't seem to miss Hunter and uh Ashley just comforts her that's about it oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. oh but Ashley does say the rooster crows thing again which I was so happy because that was yes. the all time not so, over till the rooster crows. Oh, I went down yeah. to get food. I missed the a- Ashley and Allie thing. Oh. Okay. Uh, of course you did. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Good thing yeah, I did. Uh, you, yeah, Allie's a confessional. Even though Ashley voted Hunter out, she's one of those people who's hard to hate. I wish I had that going for me. And it's like, oh, it's so cute. Aww. Which is it's totally right, because who can hate Ashley? <laughs> right. Pressure <laughs> player for real. <laughs> Yeah, right, Genesis? I do not hate Ashley. Uh- <laughs> Make that clear. <laughs> Genesis, do you want to, like, add anything to Ashley's stuff? <laughs> no, I'm good. All right. I'm go- I'm, oh, I'm you, good. Say one you thing. must hate her. Oh. Sure. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next scene is pretty quick. Why don't you talk about it, Emerson? It's your, it's your girl. It's a pretty quick one. Oh, wait. Oh, yo, it's Rhea. Okay. So, Rhea is... It's in the, the reward that she had won last episode that she had carried and made sure the team gets it because she's a hard worker in challenges. Then Alex like, hey, I needed some of that water too because Dip Scott's probably going to have a drought soon. Just like, it's fine. It'll be enough for you later. And like Rhea, like, and Alex like, the water's going to be cold. Now. And Rhea's like, it's hot because I am hot. It's just like super funny, <laughs> yeah. like little banter. Yeah. Like this episode really solidifies like Alec and Rhea's like, starting up and i really love it how much it was done this like 
they have like some of the best interactions like easily in this episode it's based off <sighs> oh yeah is connor Rhea done for you are you switching teams Hey, what do you mean? No, I still should find Rhea, <laughs> but like, for reactions base, I'm saying like, there's a start of like a new, like, fun pair. Oh, okay, okay. Tonically. Uh, Rhea, you even twist. made, uh, <laughs> he made, she made me gasp when she said, it was hard because I was in there. I was like, oh, Same. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I appreciate that we had a shower scene that wasn't, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, <laughs> I'm going to upsell the uh, alley right there. That's why Ali has haters and Rhea doesn't. <laughs> mm. um, fight words. What, sorry? Rhea probably blocks all the hate. Sorry, did you say Rhea? There are no Rhea Rhea haters? Does, uh, I, feel, I feel like Rhea would have a ton of haters. In, I in feel universe, like, is short, I feel like, like sure. in universe, in Rhea blocks all the haters and then just <laughs> pretends they don't exist. Oh, that's just like, like I you know love my actually, fans. That's definitely sure. I, I see that absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's definitely what she does. Like, oh, no, like blocking out the haters. <laughs> it's like Rhea has haters. Let's be honest. But like, what Finn like the pilot episode establishes like everyone hates Ali and Rhea's famous now. So that's what I meant. Like, mm hmm. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just when you think that uh, the episode couldn't get any funnier, we have another you will Emily scene. Oh, this my God. Regret. Let's <laughs> 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 talk about the second scene. Oh, man. Well, Pam, you should Goated do it. Scene. Pam, Goated scene. I... Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. What was it? You got oh. this. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> okay, so you will approach his Gret. Um, he's being the good, good little boyfriend that he is. He's, um, <laughs> he's trying to apologize to her. Um, he said, yes, I made a misogynistic comment about your appearance. And as an ally to women everywhere, I can assure you it won't happen again. And I fully believe that. I was like, oh my God. Yes, babe. Feminist. But, um. With a visible earpiece, you believed it? Very visible earpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, it was all a lie. Um, Gret's kind of like um, confiding in him a bit, um, saying that she can deal with like fans calling her uh, fat, but as a boyfriend, he's supposed to fulfill a more su supportive role. But sadly, this isn't true <laughs> because. Yule is taking um, instructions from Emily, who is talking to him through a headset, and <laughs> yeah, so amazing. I God. love this scene so much. <laughs> it's so good. Now kiss her. Mission unslayable. <laughs> it's mission unslayable. Unslayable. <laughs> oh my god! And then like um, Yule says something, <laughs> and then Gret. He was like, no way, and then you can't be serious, and then Gret's like, yeah, I am serious. <laughs> right. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I am serious. <laughs> that so it's, it's like one of my favorite lines, because like, I, I'll be honest, like, getting into a character as Yule, it was very hard for me to try to like, give a genuine, sincere voice, because I feel like when I'm doing Yule, I'm being very whiny on purpose, so when I got to go to that line, I was just like, oh, this is this is home again. Like it it felt as uncomfortable as I hope it came off as. Oh yeah. I mean, I so think good. just generally, like everything that Yule says is it's hard. It's like you have to take everything Yule says with a grain of salt because you know how bad of a person he is. So you don't oh. wanna believe him. <laughs> yeah. But I think it just overall works because um He's just that kind of character. He could say, <laughs> yeah. say yeah. like, yeah. he could say he <laughs> loves puppies, and then someone would be like, "Are you sure about that?" <laughs> no, I don't. No. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um, I love when his voice goes into I, like a higher pitch, and like he drags out his words more <laughs> when he's I love being that. so. I love when he goes full parrot. Yes. Just you wait. <laughs> just you wait. I love that. Love that. And, love that. Love that. Oh. 
I do I do want to comment one final thing on why I gave this episode a 10 out of 10 over other episodes. And it's because I think just Venture Camp in this episode especially finally like mastered the body language comedy that they could really deliver. 100%. Like just like the, it, uh, you've seen it throughout the season, like the little glances and people making faces when people get eliminated and that kind of stuff. And it's been perfect. But they're really leaning into it, especially with these short scenes, giving more body language comedy. And it's so good. It is so good. I actually know exactly what you're talking about because I've noticed it too. Like, um, like I've noticed that during like eliminations and like specifically one scene with Gret, like you see like the eyes darting and I'm just like, ooh, like, like they react. They be reacting. Like Lake did that. Like her eyes went in like, it was like so subtle, but like she like looked in like different directions and like Gret did the same thing when looking at Alec and I was just like, yes, the the reactions, the direction, um, the animation has just been so amazing when like people react to stuff. Yeah. That God. The body language, yeah, it just sells it so much this season. Oh my gosh. I love, and I also love that we've added like the reaction of people getting voted out because I think that adds a, such a lot. Because <laughs> normally when people get voted out, it's just like, no, oh, they're just never on the show again. And then they don't <laughs> even get a mention. And then I just, yeah, I love it. And I love, oh my gosh, I loved when James and, and Lake got voted out. Rhea was just like, <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, like, chill. I know. I love those <laughs> reactions. Those facial expressions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when when Grit and you will start making out episode one and everyone is like, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so amazing. Sick. Oh man, God. I, I gotta ask, and I, I don't know if this is accurate. I'm gonna ask the nerds and uh, specifically Emer. Is this the first time where there's like a cringe comedy scene where like the comedy is because it's so cringy? Like I feel no. like this is the first cringe comedy scene. That scene was yeah. with Aiden in the hubby. Oh, right. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was so that funny. Was, that back. was the best cringe comedy. I feel still. So. Oh, <laughs> hubby, can you give us the hubby voice, please, please? Sure. God, me I, and James I, talked about it, and we're good. <laughs> my hubby is very shy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it oh, so much. Oh, oh, oh my god! Hold the fan that my favorite. Good. God. Uh, it was, yeah, it was a very polarizing line. <laughs> I'm not even like a big fan of like the Aiden Uwu like James like relationship like kind of like that, but like when it was done in All Stars like that one little scene, it was the funniest freaking thing in the world. I couldn't stop laughing while everyone was going crazy over it. <laughs> <laughs> so great, so great. For everyone else, for me, it was like. <laughs> people were mad i don't know why it was like people were my interpretation was that he was like trolling at least. that was my interpretation he was like trolling they were, yeah. everyone was so mad and i was just like i, I don't know why i was like i'm sorry i said this line oh, no. <laughs> why was everyone mad wait why was everyone mad because what? it was it was just so cringe that nobody oh liked it. come on <laughs> they need to have a little fun come on right. they need to breathe a little uh, but yeah, no, another amazing Emily and Yule scene, and I think this episode will put Emily on the map finally, like, because people like her because she's hot, but, you know, now she's actually <laughs> character. So that's good. Yeah, I was saying that before, yeah. like, good, good, glad she actually has something to do. Yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah, I was like, waiting. I was like, I like Emily, but I need something for her to have before I can say I love her. And this was, like, the perfect episode regarding Emily, because Emily works better when she's talking to the contestant. That's her whole job, is to interact with the contestants and get the dirt. So it being like a whole like new thing, it's like a PR stunt is just so funny. Because Emily's like kind of someone who like follows the trends. So for you all to be like, help me, Emily, I need you. And it's like, I got your speech covered. And then it's like, it's just funny because Yule's not the brightest bulb in the box. So it's like, he like has to <laughs> follow his inst instructions. He's like, is it all directly? Even though like the whole like, is like, sir. And it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then he's like, Right, yeah, I love how he's so confident. So well, Nick. He was feeling himself, and <laughs> he got it all wrong. He was so really. <laughs> he's a dancer, not a talker. <laughs> yeah, dancer, not a talker. Um, 
But yeah, so another great Emily Newell scene. Um, are we ready to move on to the next one? Yeah. Yup. So the next yeah. one is pretty quick. Because this one is actually, you know, very close to being deleted. <laughs> it's just Cyan team being Cyan again. Just being uh, surprisingly wholesome, yeah, actually. I forgot like, about that. I forgot about that. But, like, I wasn't in favor of, like, cutting any, like, actual teen team scenes before the challenges because that felt a little skewed to me. Like, like you're going to give two teams, like, the screen time and, like, not a third one. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I kind of get it because there are stories you want to tell. But, like, there are three teams. They're all all-stars. Give everyone at least a little bit because I think it works out. I'm shocked yeah. this was about to be cut. This is like the first good science dynamic and I've been seeing through them all. There were some of them are very really like, oh, this one's like the first one I love, love. And I'm like, wait, this was about to be cut. Um, I can understand. Like, I can understand why it was going to be cut because it's just them talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can understand that. Um, but like, sometimes we need that. Right. Yeah. Originally, I think it's it was really like, a little like, bit of like, like, oh, they're being nice. That means like, and like, it's the calm before the storms. Like, are they going home? Like, I think that gives like the audience the hook they need to keep them interested, thinking like, okay, yeah, science is going. And then it's like, are they going? Like, I feel like that is like great when they have interactions like this because it really messes with people's expectations. It's like good to like surprise people. Yeah. Um. I said. I said this, but uh, this scene originally was gonna be a little more plot relevant with something uh, but we removed it and you know i'm not, I'm not gonna say what it is <laughs> yeah that's all i'm gonna say anyway okay. uh moving on it's challenge time oh boy it's finally challenge time challenge, challenge. Tess's time, yes! reaction is i'm sorry ali oh. and ali's like thanks tess that's it <laughs> Cute. That was a very quickly transition scene. I noticed. <laughs> Allie was like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. We just got like a test sorrow. Allie. I noticed that too. It was quick. <laughs> it was very quick. Yeah. Because Allie was like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> just cut. How does Lake get a reaction? Okay. Not like her. Not Hunter. Mm, I feel like, well, now, like with Hunter, like that's the the third season two person. And now with with Connor, it's like, like the uh, the uh, third, no fourth. Um, and now it's just people are getting like redundant. Like, okay, well, season two is just getting chopped. <laughs> well, this was to be expected, yeah, though. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, Crystal drops a bunch of musical references. They're pretty. Good. I don't know if you guys yes. caught them all, but. I laughed. I, I laughed at not even um, a musical person. Hamilton, right? The Hamilton one. <laughs> that was fun. I love that. <laughs> I wanted it to end with someone like maybe like Alex saying like "Wicked." <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been really good. <laughs> Is Crystal also, because Wizard of Oz reference. <laughs> Tam is a comment here. Connor saying this is gold. Boomer to millennial speak right there. <laughs> oh my gosh! And Trevor being like, "Hit it!" and then pointing at nobody. It's just fucking amazing. <laughs> It's so good. God. Oh man, and Trevor oh, sings a song. Silly Billy once again showing his musical skills. It's wow, good. that was that. Oof, that blew me away. <laughs> God, Trevor killed it. Really good. And the pelvis. So uh, pelvic thrust. Oh my god. Pelvic thrust. <laughs> See, this is a really interesting challenge because one, they're not in swimsuits anymore. Two, like they have to like. <laughs> plan for the challenge like i feel like right. that's we don't usually see that right mm. we don't usually see like a planning phase that's pretty great mm -hmm. yeah there um, was a very we, uh like the theme of like just these like big physical challenges where you just jump right into it and you just go i, de I definitely like this kind of pacing like well uh, now they have at least a little downtime before which you know makes sense because they're writing but like it, it contributes to like the working together dynamic of this episode Mm -hmm. so uh we're gonna be quick about this because it's just planning for now but uh, magenta and uh, both magenta and cyan talk does anyone have any funny anecdotes from the dialogue that they want to point out i know there's one that emer probably loves uh, that ali says oh god yeah i did a joke all right should i just say it i said i was like oh wow it's like, like the whole grandpa is like oh my grandpa like was it about singing i don't know it's kind of ironic that it's about a vocal challenge Ali dropping a grandpa because you know how he died lung cancer oh it's my like, god damn. you're sick <laughs> what made you think <laughs> it's in the script I, 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 material 
<laughs> so dark. Look so um, oh, oh my, my favorite part of that of the uh, like the the talking before the challenge. Um, when Gabby is like, I have so much feelings that I want to get out. <sighs> and, like she goes crazy, and it's like she literally writes a love song. <laughs> Those are her feelings. Those are her feelings. Aww. I love that. Uh, Ian is a musical theater kid. Pretty great. Yes. Of course he is. Of course he is. That's my favorite part. Of course he is. Honestly, that just makes him such... uh, Like, that little bit of characterization made me like him more. Because I'll be honest, I really don't love Aiden's character. But learning more about him in those regards gives me... A little bit more to root for him because I was also right. a theater kid, and so I was like, okay, I understand him more. I understand him a little <laughs> bit better, um, and his vast change in emotions are similar to that. So I get it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it was like probably the first thing we learned about him, besides the super fan thing. Oh, he likes to travel. He likes oh yeah, travel. he does like to travel. That's true. <laughs> I like signing. So added to love so traveling, <laughs> and that's my entire character. I love traveling. <laughs> <laughs> and also in the finale, his last I line, love his traveling. Love traveling. He was <laughs> so happy when he said that. I love it. <laughs> also, he he sleeps with a, a teddy bear. Yes, that oh is my also God. something that he does. That's so iconic. <laughs> the teddy bear. Yeah. Monokuma. <laughs> <laughs> the only the other line I really liked was uh, was Fiore's. Um, this wasn't about no contracts. Like that <laughs> yeah, really to me. Yeah. That reminded me of. Um, that reminded me of uh, uh, world tour because I think they said like this is not in our contracts or something. Absolutely, and Fiore oh, yeah. to be the character to say that I respect the shit out of her. Like you stand your ground, little eight year old or exactly. ten year old. You stand your ground. I <laughs> know. I think she is eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, because she was uh, six the first time around. Yeah, okay, six, so I was yeah. right the first time. Yeah. Uh, I love her. I love the union. Well. Yeah, I love Fiore's line of, I can't play an instrument, and then she literally plays the keys. Oh, Go, man. Fiore. Lie. For I love Yule's little, uh, you know, uh, your boyfriend's literally a K-pop star. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Really oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is something. Uh, yeah, I wish he said, like, I'm really in danger. He was mad offended. Oh, my God. Um, oh, and one more thing. Uh, Aiden says, like, or Aiden's like, uh, probably because we only talked twice last season. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> love, love okay. that line. Love that line. Because I don't know if y'all caught it, but I think you did, because I heard someone say, it was a little shady. It was. It was a little shady. <laughs> I was like, probably because, like, we talked twice last season. <laughs> So, uh, I wanted to go. say, uh, I love that. At least it was more than Hunter. <laughs> at least it was more than Hunter. I think that that almost made it in, I think, did it? Because I know you suggested something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. Man, that yeah. would be so uh, funny. Uh, I, w- I want to really drop, funny. like, oh Aiden, and, Aiden and Hunter breadcrumbs for everyone. The <laughs> <laughs> first merge vote out to last merge vote out of Aiden talk to test hilarious. <laughs> Sorry guys, but your alliance is the strongest and also you don't <laughs> fucking speak to me. <laughs> God, How do you like that? I live for that. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Petty Aiden. Petty Aiden. I love Petty Aiden. <laughs> oh shit. I actually got one line edit. I didn't realize the whole uh we're a bunch or Jake says to Allie, we're a bunch of hopeless lovesick romantics, aren't we? Oh, I didn't realize I got that edit. Yo! <laughs> It was oh, so good. Really? That just seemed like such a natural line. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah, thirsty. Jake and Ellie, they have like great parallels. They also have another parallel. <laughs> their, the mora- the mortality of their uh their the mortality of their you know? grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. Jeez, oh, oh my, my god. Gosh. That's terrible. Um But yeah, no, it's stuff uh, emerged the stuff like the grandpa, you know, again, there's a lot of like plot points that we're saving for later. You know, we had restraint to not mention Ali's grandpa for six episodes, but here it is now. It's great. (laughs) Yeah, it's like nice at least. Like she still remembers him and like all the kind acts he's done. And I feel like that really fits with Ali's growth as a person. It's like even though despite all the haters like telling her that she's a forgettable person, she ruined DC two for them. She still remembers her like her happy memories with her grandpa to like make her feel better during all those 
I find it so weird that people say that Ali ruined DC two for them because like by extension, what did Ali do specifically? Because like the argument is that she did nothing. So what did <laughs> she do to cause her to ruin yeah. DC two? <laughs> Yeah, but the fan favorite is Lake, so then, like, if Allie goes, like, an episode longer than Lake, people are going to be kind of tight. You know what I find really refreshing? So, in DC2, you know, our our list of characters wasn't... It, we only had that many characters because the beta was just forgotten about. Um, Aiden was so freaking popular mm. during DC2, and I was, like, so overwhelmed by it. Now I'm so refreshed... Because I see people saying that they don't like Aiden. Like, and I see that like all the time. And I'm just like, ah. Like it's like so it's like so calming for me just to be like, Aww. okay. He's like he's like kind of grounded again. Like yeah. not everybody loves him like they do. Yeah. He's not awesome. balanced. Talking about your own character, like, ah, people hate him. <laughs> oh man. Um, oh my goodness. But yeah, um, is there, is there any other parts of this fluffy team building exercise, I guess, that you want to talk about? Because now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> you can talk about Ali singing thing. It's like we get a little tease of Ali singing, like just like the oh, yeah. after verses. And I think that was really cute and done by oh, Joy and all like, the right in. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yes, whoa. I'm going compliment an Ali. Oh, Please hear it your all at last. Emer, you traitor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That was cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, we're about to jump into three pretty interesting scenes. The first one of which is Connor and Alec talk about Rhea and uh, Alec's ex-wife. Why don't you take the stage here, Emer? This is your Ooh. your call. Okay. You're the, you're the con talking Rhea guy, about it. So um, you need to... So regarding this scene, I think it's really interesting. It's like Connor's like, all right. It's like, what if I sing a song about Rhea? Which is honestly a great call because Rhea's awesome. And then Alex like, no, 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 no. You got to get over this uh, breakup. Why don't you sing about a song like you like? Like, because uh, Connor was older, so he like loves like the rock genre. Like, you can see Alec really trying to sway him away from the whole Rhea mindset. And we kind of like notice it. It's like Alec is a manipulative person, but we do notice like he treats Connor like a friend because he doesn't have many friends when you think about it. He, he lives alone and drinks. It's like a big thing for Connor. I mean, Alec. But then, like, I just love to see how this, like, all the expressions were, like, laid out there. There's, like, a lot of, like, emotion into, like, all the deliveries. And I think it really makes the scene so compelling, despite being very short. And it tops off with a confessional. It's just amazingly well done from the writing and the acting and, like, all the music and animation. Yeah, I agree. Perfectly said. I love the, like, little, like, freaky look in Connor's eyes when he's like when he's talking about writing a song about Rhea it's just like oh my god Connor you're it reminds so- me of yeah it reminds me of the um the dub I keep talking about it but the parody dub where oh at god. the beginning the way they char- characterize Connor is just like oh oh Rhea oh Rhea's my everything oh Rhea 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 I freaking love it I know Oh, Connor. Oh, Connor. God, Connor's God. amazing. <laughs> Maybe if I sing this song for Rhea, she'll be my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Connor's, Connor Sterling is predominantly about Rhea, but if you've listened to this, like, the people who've listened to the podcast know my favorite relationship in this season currently is Connor and Alec. Yes. Just because I just feel it's so wholesome on alex part which we only ever got to see him do with a child which wasn't great so um mm. to see him do it with a more age appropriate um companion this time it's just so amazing it's so amazing to see both these characters not only have a different person to interact with because they only really interact with one person in their previous season uh but a person to build their personalities off of and you get to see a lot more of connor's like just how much he really cares like you uh, that that to me is what i really love about the alec and connor scenes is we get to see how much connor really cares yeah it was a very fun dynamic and like they they just so naturally feel like 
they'd be like drinking buddies outside of this <laughs> game. So Aww. it really is is nice to see them interact because you're right that they did literally just latched onto one person in their <laughs> last season. So oh yeah, very yeah. very nice to see them interact. Uh, what else is there to say? Yeah, I like how Alec um, is really showing his like more mature side, and like just like coming up from his like divorce now, it, it just like really that side of him really shows through their conversations with like Connor, and um, yeah, and his advice to him because like Connor, he's still in his yeah. simp stage, and yeah, it's like oh my god, most of oh, most of so Alec's so content during season one was just being a father to Fiore. Yeah. So now we're now we're seeing like his kind of normal advice to a fellow adult. Yes. Which <laughs> which, which Mark's brought up was like just really nice to see. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I have hello fellow kids in my head just for you saying that word. <laughs> hello fellow kids. Oh my god. <laughs> Moving on to the Gabby and Aiden or the Cyan team um I just love the way that Gabby immediately is like, I've got it, guys. I've got it. Kind of giving her a little bit more of a leader role. Um, and everybody else yeah. being more of like a hype up kind of person. It, it's it's great for Gabby. It's great for Gabby's personality uh, to step into this leader role, especially for, um, in my opinion, her longevity in the game. I think it, it's, it means that she's going to be more proactive. So I, that's what I love to see in terms of strategy and personality mix, mixed into gameplay. There's also the scene where it is revealed that Ellie has orchestrated that Tom and Aiden kiss. Ooh, we're getting into this. Ooh. Now we're recording this. Ooh, on, I see. Um, we're recording this on Monday, so I don't know what the popular reception is going to be. I'm actually kind of scared. I don't know. I, what the I, do, I don't yeah. think it'll be good for Ellie. I'm not going to lie. I don't yeah. think it'll be good because her reasoning is just so bad, but also it's so good. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest yeah. discourse is going to be: Do you guys think it's cheating? <gasps> um, oh. no, because yeah. because actors act, and you know, this is on stage. Like m- me myself, like I've I'm an actor, and I've been on stage before, and I've I've had to fake relationships. Like I've had to kiss someone on stage before. Like I don't I don't consider that cheating at all especially if it's if it's acting but <laughs> you know jake is is jake so <laughs> yeah true mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and you can just say like i was acting james <laughs> <laughs> the boys didn't i did for a second <laughs> mm-hmm. that's so iconic <laughs> We'll bring yeah. back Rosa oh, just for eight up, minutes. I was packing Rosa. <laughs> what's up, Dennis? Um, Are you to say my piece now or wait until later? Yeah, say it. Say, oh, it. Uh, say it now, might as well. Read Genesis content. Go for it. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. You know what? Okay. We'll just we'll we'll get it out. We'll, we'll I'll just I'll let the 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 kettle. I'm I'm losing my mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've made it sufficiently clear that I do not like Ellie. <laughs> uh, and I will say this is definitely a case where I'm starting to realize that my theory of Ellie being the main antagonist is probably going to end up being true. Because um, oh she is! <laughs> she is! Sorry, okay, okay. Okay. God. She, so... Everyone's everyone's like willing to jump on Jake, and I know they are probably going to jump on Jake as well when this episode releases for being mad. It's not that I can blame them, but we all know who's really running this shit show, and it's this motherfucker right here. Cause oh my god, like how <laughs> hypocritical son of a bee can you be to like straight Don't up Daughter of a bee. Daughter. Okay, my bad. Sorry, my bad. Daughter of a bee. How much of a daughter of a bee can you be to like actually like? I keep going back to the interviews again because she was constantly harping on other people for their shortcoming. And it's like, girl, you're doing this. Like, I like this. The straight up the part. The part. Um, the part where she's like, yeah. Um, actually, it's gonna be very entertaining. Watch like. Uh, watching the um, 
sorry, it's going to be very entertaining watching the effects of my actions because, you know, I just want to have a little fun, you know? I just kind of want to see how this all plays out. So I'm going to play with this dude's feelings. who's already very insecure. I'm going to play with his feelings a little more just because... What, what did he? What did she say specifically? What, what was it? It was again? like there, there's no TV, so I need to create right. some entertainment. There's no TV. Th there's no TV, but it's the next best thing. Like, girl, shut your hoity-toity, raven sounding <gasps> ass up. Like, oh shit, <laughs> girl, <laughs> pop off Genesis, pop off. I'm so <laughs> happy for Genesis, like right now. Like, this is his yeah. moment. I respect. I respect. Spoiler. Oh, oh, what? Huh? I'm gonna be in trouble during. I'm gonna be in trouble during the MVP picking part. I'm gonna be in trouble. Oh, <laughs> oh. 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 oh, You know what? That's oh a fair God. MVP oh. though, because his MVP was very funny. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I said all I needed to. <laughs> I don't want to beat a dead horse. Okay, uh, so I I do want to talk about Ellie I because okay. I really I don't. Uh, disagree with your point of that's horrible like what she's doing yeah but I'm also looking at Ellie in the terms of like she's a character on the show she's being betrayed in a villainous light mm -hmm. um it's not surprising for me to hear what that is Ellie's mindset because you know for the role that she's playing on this season like Yes, it was a little out of pocket, but like as somebody who adores characters, especially like like females that just are ruthless beyond end, just like right. I couldn't I couldn't hate Ellie because like <laughs> No, oh, I, I, I definitely I love don't. I love Ellie the same way I love Rhea. And like right. I can't <laughs> not I can't hate the archetype of, of girl boss woman that'll just do whatever she can to to win or cause mischief i just can't hate that that character arc or character mm -hmm. personality but i do see where you're coming from and if this right. was real life yeah absolutely fuck ellie but yeah. i think in in the context of this venture camp it's a show it's animated oh. it's not real i say like bring it on ellie no okay so i i will say this if if y'all, like, presented to me, like, hey, like, you know, like, you have the opportunity to change Ellie in any way, not saying you should, please don't, but if you had any, <laughs> like, like, if I had any opportunity to change Ellie's character in any way, I wouldn't touch a thing, because she is a very good character, I think she's very well done, absolutely, I fully agree, um, and she serves her purpose, and she is very good at what she does. Here's the thing to me. The reason why I dislike Ellie so much and why it's not really a problem for Yule for me is because Ellie's a very realistic depiction mm -hmm. of someone you could see in real life who acts like that and it makes my blood boil. <laughs> yeah, because she's a very dynamic character based yeah. on like she actually needs the money and like she'll do whatever yeah. she needs to do to get money and then get the win. So like I understand that. Completely. Exactly. And because she's so realistic and like and, and such a it's because she's such a good character that ticks me off so much. And that's why there's so much like, you know, you got uh, so many Ellie supporters and so many Ellie haters. And like th the reason why is because she's a very realistic depiction. Um, but I I'm I'm fully I'm full I'm fully putting my foot down on the people who are like, yeah, like you would totally do this. And it, like if you needed to make money, you would totally do this in this situation. I'm like, no. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Sure, maybe yeah. I lose the money, but I. But I'm coming out with my dignity intact. I'm only gonna very briefly touch on this, um, but like, I don't know if it's a cultural thing because I live in Asia, but like, people like Ellie just don't exist. So to me, she's just like a cartoon character. <laughs> but I understand that, like, for like Western countries, it's like, oh, it's kind of realistic, you know? Yeah, jobs, yeah. People steal others for money. I will say, it's not a thing here. You know, you go to McDonald's, you see like sixty-year-olds. You don't see mm -hmm. teenagers. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are like that in America, I will say. But, you know. <laughs> if anything, Yule and Rita is actually what's common here. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. 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 Okay. Yeah. Need to move there. <laughs> Interesting. That's actually really cool. Sorry. Anyway, but yeah. <laughs> what I, do you I mean need to move there? there? Hold up. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Nothing. I never said I need to move there. Wait, hang on. Wait. Who right, said that? We'll just clone clone Rhea and Yule like 50 times and then Tam can be alone in a room with them. <laughs> oh, Tam said Perfect. that. Mm, Tam. <laughs> of course. Of course it's me. 
I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> Um, oh my I, God. The cultural nuances of Ellie. You know, we're talking about a total drama Jason cartoon. The cultural nuances Ellie, of Ellie, lost on me. <laughs> Ellie yeah, has so no, many I, layers. It's it's okay. ridiculous, but it's so amazing. Mm-hmm. She's it's like really onion. good. It is really good. Um, yeah. Also, for context, Vi, I I did compare Ellie to Homelander in a previous episode. <laughs> not in terms of like how, like not in terms of like the extent of of her actions because let's be real homelander is way oh. worse in terms of that but because um i i made a comparison about how uh ellie has so much depth because uh she there there was a part in in dc1 where she snaps in i think episode 11 right where you know like the big scene where she like goes off on jake right um and you know one would normally expect to get hate for something like that but she ended up getting so many supporters as a result. And it reminds me of a certain scene from the boys when Homelander experienced a similar situation where, you know, they, they both have this realization that they don't need to hide the monster that they are. So, Mm. uh, yeah, that's, that's why the the Ellie Lander stuff comes in. See, Uh, I actually defend, (laughs) I defend that scene a lot. And I know it's like, it seems like I'm like hammering and hammering on Jake. Um, if I just put myself in Ellie's shoes in this in this instant, like, say I did something to, like, better my game, like, yeah, I don't feel the, the greatest about it, but, like, when I'm, like, if I was walking and someone was behind me yapping and yapping and yapping away at my ear and telling me everything that I did wrong and then why I should feel bad and then how I'm the, I'm the villain and they're the, they're the victim and they were right and I was wrong. And then, like, we we both like climb the ladder and it's just like oh that other person's like oh well if you give this to me maybe i'll forgive you i'm gonna be so real with you if i was ellie i would react a lot bigger than how she did because that would piss me off like you just you just ramble to me like my all that and then like now you're being like oh well Maybe if, like maybe if you give me this, maybe I'll forgive you. And then it's like, well, then like you clearly don't feel some type of way about it if you're willing to put it on the line like that. Like you're not really mad, and you're just like diarrhea vomiting of the mouth. And like, I don't agree with Ellie like bringing his boyfriend into it. Like that was that was wrong. Right. <laughs> but like everything else, I was like, you go, Ellie. See, normally, and I'm so sorry to Jake because it seems like I'm dogging on him left and right. But like, you go, Ellie. <laughs> jump into Jake's defense here. Uh, not yeah. saying I like Jake, but to jump into Jake's defense on that whole scene. <laughs> this is going to be a DC one episode eleven. So, um, <laughs> the retrospective oh, yeah. DC one. <laughs> we we will get to the DC one retrospective when we get to it. But um, yeah. So um, to to defend Jake here, no, that wasn't the right thing to say, but. I would I would agree with you, Vi, if if Ellie had just played like a, a selfish game in the sense of like, oh, it was just a move to get like Tom out. Where it was actually a lot more than that. And not only did he it did she, her actions get Tom out of the game, but it also completely destroyed like Jake and Tom's thing, which one could argue that they were probably heading down a de- destructive road anyway, but even still like you were the catalyst in that uh regardless and like jake mm. did trust her um even if that trust was misplaced if that makes sense um i i agree with you in the sense of like 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 her doing that obviously led to something terrible right. but i would argue that maybe ellie didn't understand that it could get that bad because what ellie's doing right now she's just trying to separate jake from tom and like because of the vote like that's all she that's i feel like that's all she's like trying to do is just you know because she wants to better herself in the game and she made this this alliance with fiora and alec and is like oh well if i do this and i get one more step further in the game i don't think she fully like and i know i'm speaking for her but like i feel like she didn't fully understand the weight okay, of what like, she was doing okay but h- how do you not understand the weight when you go hey by the way your boyfriend was cheating on you i'm so sorry like i feel like because it's it's a game and like 
if you watch like stuff like Survivor, like things like that, not to this degree, but like things happen all the time where where the game is put above relationships. And like maybe Ellie was like, oh well, maybe they'll they'll talk after the show and like everything will be fine because she even admits that she definitely took it too far. Like after Tom leaves and Jake calls her a horrible person, but like uh, I don't know. I mean, like yeah. I feel like she would. Okay, I mean, if I was Ellie, like I don't know if I would go that far, but like that just like adds to the to the amount of layers that ellie has right exactly yeah i will say um yeah this is this is a very nuanced thing um and i will say i've not watched much much survivor so yeah you know i'm, I'm not used to that whole thing um if that's a very common thing people are assholes basically yeah i figure <laughs> that, especially an old survivor mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but okay. i feel like we've been on this a lot so yeah 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 my bad but we'll, we'll, move I'm, on. we'll I'm, move on i'm good to move on yeah 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 that's so your dan versus Eden, everyone Marcus. Sorry. <laughs> if you're going to Marcus, Nina says, You remind me of my sister. Which, you know, it's pretty great. <laughs> pretty good. This, Love that. This scene was going to be a lot longer, and it was going to have Mark, or it was going to have Fiori being like, la, 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 I'm not listening. Because, like, Marcus just starts talking about random stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember that. Yeah. That was like the first I'm time glad that it got condensed. Out of this room. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of glad it got condensed because, like, I feel like it was just enough. Yeah, no, we, we stand Marcus scenes. We love, we I love stand Marcus Nina. Um, but yeah, no, now it's time for what the moment we've all been waiting for, the songs. I love how they took about like 20 minutes to build up to the songs. It's really great because you know it's going to happen, but it's like we're taking our time, you know? Yeah. All right, who wants to talk about the, uh, the songs? Well, as somebody who who is musically inclined and like listened to all the um songs and like finalizing them and like actually getting to see them play out in like the vision that i had for it like whoa has odd nation cartoons completely surpassed any kind of expectation and i feel like the viewers will agree like it's such a spectacle and like how could you not love this even if you don't like music just like and a lot of people were like oh let's get him out of the swimsuits just like from that into like full-on rock star like outfits singing like the music sounds amazing like how could you not love this <laughs> like, i will <laughs> fight anybody that doesn't like this <laughs> yeah i love cyan teams like subtle dance moves as well like with tom and aiden they have like little dance moves. <laughs> I loved. I loved. I love Tom's little... new design. Yeah, he looks oh, like his hair. Uh, his hair was great. He looks like the guy from Green Day. I love him. Oh, he's Aiden? so adorable. Aiden's design uh, Aiden kind of dumb, made me uh made me a little Whoa. questionable about the physics of his hair. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, is it is it incest if I like my own character? Oh my god! <laughs> um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah when so like aiden's hair parts in the middle so i'm not really sure how it could just turn 75 percent like white <laughs> or, or like i don't know how he brushed it to kind of give that design but okay i guess they found a uh they found like squid ink on the floor and they just like here it here you go yes totally. squid ink I can't wait to watch the episode again when we wrap up because like it's such it's such a great episode. Mm-hmm. I watched yeah. it like three times today. Episode. Okay, you know what? Before we continue, what is your favorite song out of the three? Now? I want to know what's the best song out of the three. Oh my gosh, that's like choosing your favorite like candy. <laughs> um, I love like I I love rock songs, so Magenta's really stuck with me like. Um, well, I guess Magenta's was more pop. Yellow was more rock. I really liked Yellow, but, you know, um, Cyan's was so sweet. Like, how could you, like, how could you not like any of them? I don't. But, like, I would say all of them are my favorite, even though, like, that's kind of copping out. But, like, when I'm asked, but my opinion changes all the time regarding, like, music. So, like, having changed, like, um, favorite songs is, like, kind of normal for me so i'm just gonna go ahead and pick all three of them 
I yeah. I loved all three of the songs so yeah. but I would definitely say my favorite hands down Cyan team. I love the piggyback like it's so just, <laughs> I remember when I originally listened to the demos of these songs, the one song I could not stop singing, even just like before, like as we were recording and all that stuff, was Piggyback. I just was always Literally. singing it in the back of my head. Piggy, piggyback, won't you take <laughs> Piggyback, won't you take <laughs> It is very catchy. I love that. I love that. I only have one complaint with Piggyback. I think it's obvious what it is. <laughs> Tess doesn't what? sing. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Well, we give the illusion that she's. <laughs> this is an artist. She's not uh, like. She's not a muse. She's the painter. Yeah. She's Makes letting everyone like, do their thing and she's killing. Uh, 13 out of the 14 characters in Except Tess makes me sad. <laughs> That's like so funny. She's busy looking for sunglasses. She forgot the saying. <laughs> <laughs> also, who did, who did the, the set design of, in the background where it was like a sun and like hills and stuff? Oh, oh that, that was that probably was Tess, Gabby. Okay, that would probably be Gabby because, like, it was so it was so childishly drawn, and I feel like Gabby <laughs> definitely made the background. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if it was Tess, a fun time I would have been like, if, Tess, if it was Tess, I would have been like, uh, Tess, you're, an art you're, <laughs> you're going to school for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Tess is an oh art God. major. <laughs> it's, funny, it's like Tess is an oh, art major, man. and she's like doing these drawings, and then like. Um, Ellie's a fashion major, and her outfits are never great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to finish my thought, uh, because Testin, I I have to give it to Magenta, also because like Marcus is just rocking in the background. It's amazing, and also because yes. all four members have like their own line. There's, I feel like you know some of them they overlap, which is great as well. But I, I love it when they have solos. I <laughs> remember. Solo. Um, I remember. Uh, so a little bit of insider. So, um, Jake, Jake's voice actress, uh, couldn't get her, um, her lines in like quite on time. So what happened was I, I, um, sang Jake's part in, uh, in Magenta's song. And like, there's an old recording. I don't know where it is now, but it's probably buried (laughs) under in the proofreaders chat. Um, and I, I noticed that there was like a small harmony during Ashley's part. So I don't know if you guys uh, listened to it, Tam and Jay, mm-hmm. like when I was substituting uh, Jake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like I added a little harmony during Ashley's part and I thought it sounded so good and I'm so sad that it didn't make it into the final game. Oh my God. Uh, oh, I have to, I have to uh, listen to it again. Because I listened it's, to it before. I don't know where it's it is. buried. Yeah. I don't know where it is either. I think <laughs> I, I have it downloaded somewhere. I was so shocked. I was like, "Why is why, why is Aiden here?" I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> why is Aiden here?" <laughs> Not only is Aiden taking Jake's man, it was Jake's line. Sequel. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Je- Jenny, Benny, Tam, and uh, Emer, what's your favorite songs? Before we move on, huh. um. oh, favorite? Oh shoot. I'm like Alec. I can't pick a favorite kid, so <laughs> I'm gonna struggle for a second. Hold up. Shut up, my thing. What are you talking about? Oh my god, that was so shady. Looking at the mall, I feel like I enjoy them for all different reasons. I feel like some of the coolest, like, vocals are yellow, but then, like, blue has, uh, like, a cyan has, like, this horror element of, like, will they, will they? but it also fits with the song, too. And, like, oh, Magenta has, like, horror. this horror, like, this, like, all the voices very interesting. So, I might. I just go sign just because I feel like that was like the most hyped one. But I love them all equally. <laughs> oh my god. It's hard. I know. It's just really hard. So what I will say is that I love the Cyan team. There was like a little shot of Jake looking sad. I was like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very usual. God. I love I love Cyan's song for the catchiness, and I love Magenta's song for the drama, and then I love the um the yellow teams for just like the yeah, whole. Yeah, we know why. No, why. Either the first thing. Oh my god! But oh my god, Marks killed it. You cannot tell me that Marks did not kill that solo. Oh, that's oh my so god! Good. Exactly, so you're good. so right, Tam. Like Marks. The second oh, you said like, Marks has to go in. It's like even more joy. It's just insane. 
talented. Oh, oh, oh. oh my oh, god, it's so oh. good. Exactly. Yeah. That was a really good part. And then like you hear Vanessa do like the Gret stuff, like the yes. vocals, like within the accent. I was like, wow, like, this is so great. Yeah. You know what? You know what amazing. really stuck with me? The end of Yellow Song, Alex little ending. I was so obsessed with it. Do you remember? I was so obsessed with his last note. Yeah, no, I, I loved Alex's voice in this. It's so great. No matter how loud we try. Right. Like, I was like, ooh, yes. Good. <gasps> Amazing. It's so shady that like, Connor has the line, uh, live in the moment till I die. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God it was a very too, within his, like, his point of story he's at. It's just like so perfectly done. Exactly. Like it's like all of them like hit it so well. It's like hard to say who's your favorite singer. It's like every one of them are my favorite singers. Like, damn, this is insane. <laughs> That's so hard. I mean, if I, uh, I mean, I know you're not asking the question, but if I, did, I did give it to like Aiden and Tom. Like their harmonies are so great. Yeah, <laughs> they were, they were so bro. Cute. Like, the little Jason, shuffle. like Vi, yeah, so like cute. battling out like those harmonies like together was like so great and like well done. Yeah, I'm yeah. so glad I was able to to. Uh, sing on this venture camp because I oh, I have yeah. a singing YouTube channel and you know <gasps> it's so funny um I just, I just um, I just I just we're gonna look in here <laughs> shut up yeah it's gonna be waste for everyone gets to watch it so good <laughs> and I just celebrated uh 700 subscribers and <gasps> from me saying that till now I've jumped up another 100 Yay! from DC and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the rate of me yeah. posting videos is so slow. <laughs> oh. The podcast in episode six coming out on Thursday is going to like, you're going to have like 2,000 by the end. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I mean, yeah. I'm definitely going to oh, use that to my advantage. We gave Jamo <laughs> a small boost. The podcast gave Jamo a small boost on his channel. So, <laughs> might have I love that. We need an album. Uh, we need one. <laughs> uh, Jenny, also, Benny, quick plug in. I want to say, um, uh, if you want to hear Aiden sing, you can go buy a cameo for eighty bucks, <gasps> like on the Patreon top. Yes, I recently it. found out that they could do that with Hunter and Bad Romance. So if you ever want to yeah. hear Aiden sing something, you could do that. Or if you if if you don't want that, sorry, I'm plugging a little bit. But I've recently oh. started um, charging on my own time. Just like if if anybody wants like a full song from Aiden. Like, I've had a couple of requests. I set the bar at, like, 50 bucks for an entire song. And if it goes over five minutes, then I charge an extra 10. Um, half of a song is is 30 or 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 a discussed amount. So, sorry, that's my little my little plug. But um, I'm on Discord, and I have my YouTube channel if you ever need to contact me. I don't know why you would, but uh, you can go do that. <laughs> How many songs are longer than five minutes? Um, Bad Romance is actually longer than five minutes. Oh. As I've okay. as I found out. <laughs> Aiden sings Bohemian Rhapsody. It's gonna happen. Oh my, oh my god, I would <laughs> Mama um... No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's your preview. <laughs> Don't even say it, just say hmm. <laughs> Let him go. Bismillah no um so yeah, Jenny, Benny, favorite song? Um, this is probably gonna change because it, it it always changes. <laughs> um, uh, especially since I I really like these songs a lot. Um, I'm not very much I'm not much of a music person personally. Um, but uh, I mean like I I'll appreciate music where it comes. So I don't I, like all of the little nuances. I say that as someone who sings. So, <laughs> um, but. Uh, for all of the little nuances, I'm probably not gonna get, despite you know singing here and there. Um, but like, I mean, they all sounded great to me. <laughs> um, I guess I'll hand it to Yellow Team just because I'm not usually a fan of rock songs. Actually, I, I'm 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 very much like an I don't like the rock genre. Um, but. I don't know. There, there was something very nice about seeing um, these characters go all out with the with the punk rock styles and everything like that, and actually like doing a really solid job, all things considered. Um, and um, also, I just like how there was like 
little drama in the song compared to the other two, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This really did feel like a Phineas and Ferb episode. I don't know why. Well, maybe if someone says what you're doing in the episode as well. Who says it? Trevor does. Yeah, I, I remember that. <laughs> Trevor says, what you doing? Hey, I, I don't hey Tom, know I know what we're going to do today. Hey, Tom. This really did feel like a Phineas and Ferb episode, which is great, you know? We're going to have a piss off Aren't you a little old to be playing this venture camp? They say to Connor. Aren't <laughs> you a little too old to be uh, playing with a puppet? Stick to bus driving. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you were oh, rage. That scared him all. <laughs> <laughs> you got him to back off. But yeah, no, Crystal... Um, so a lot of people are theorizing who's going to lose the challenge. I bet it's going to be someone sings bad. And no, no one sang bad. It's just the song yeah. got destroyed. <laughs> I'm glad that we took that direction because, yeah. again, singing is so subjective. And if I mm -hmm. never want anyone to feel like, like, as, like, even though they're playing a character, I never want somebody to to feel bad about how they sing. Right. Like, everyone shined this episode, and I'm glad we we did not end up like judging them. Like, mm -hmm. this was a nice thing that everyone put on, and the only reason that Yellow lost was because that freak accident happened, and I'm I'm glad we did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The ceiling light falls on Yule's foot. Versus I. Not a vacuum cup, man. This is where we should have put Neil. When it falls, it falls on Yule's foot. Meow. True. What a That's natural I reaction. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Okay. When your foot gets busted up. Uh, so yeah, this is the first time where Crystal gets really. I feel like this is the first time Crystal gets like genuinely pissed off. Um, which is yeah. great. Yeah. But I feel like she wasn't yeah, actually that pissed Crystal off at late, but here she's actually pissed off. Is her hair a little messed up during that? <laughs> I'm. I'm. See, we're seeing a picture right now. I think it is. See. Yeah. I I, I feel like this season. Was... So far, Crystal's been like pretty much a background character. So to her, for her to have like a sizable role this episode is great. Love that. I would not agree with that, only because like <laughs> she is pretty much the face of like she is the host. She is the one announcing yeah. the challenges. I get what you're saying though about like giving her like actual more substance, but besides like just being the host. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've. <laughs> I love Crystal so much. I love, and I've said this before, I like her more than Derek and Trevor. Yeah. I love Crystal. Yeah. She's so great. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like All Stars has done a great job at really fleshing them out. I feel like in their first seasons, it was kind of like, eh, it's all right. It's not great. It's all right. But now they're like, ooh, spicy. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> New material amazing. <laughs> Whether it be, I don't know what, what happened in this episode when we were writing Crystal. We got the Lone Ranger line. We got the so close to the end line. Yeah. The puns were getting bad. Oh, she really popped this episode. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm not going to give her MVP, but I, I, I would consider it. I would consider it. Oh. Her MVP. Crystal? <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was also considering Crystal as an MVP. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> Might change my mind. Uh, oh my god. So, so Ymir, why don't you uh, describe this last stretch of the episode? Actually, out. before that, before that, uh, oh. can I bring one thing? Just one minor thing. Yeah? yeah. Dan's ghost Ashley. is in this episode. All right, right, yeah. <gasps> the, ghost the, ghost the ghost of Dan, of Dan is in this episode. <laughs> Yo! What? Oh, yeah, that was so funny. Like, I didn't notice it, and then everyone pointed it out. I was like, oh, yeah, you guys are right. Like... <laughs> I was so shocked. I was not expecting that. You know, I mean, props to Jared and Robert. And they probably did it completely on accident, but Dance I still ghost. think it was really funny. <laughs> um, to, to anyone who doesn't know what we're referring to, there. If you listen during the cheer for the cyan team, it is the cyan <gasps> team. Yeah, it is the cyan team. If you listen during the cyan team's cheer, you can hear uh, Dan's. Yeah, in there. <laughs> oh um, my god! <laughs> because what? they used can... um, they used the screams from DC One, but I I don't think they took Dan's scream out of there, so it's just like that is so freaking funny. Oh my god! 
I mean, like, it makes sense. Like, he's dead. Jared Smith yeah. is pre-planned, I bet. He's haunting the camp. Yeah. He's haunting yeah, exactly. the camp. Yeah. Still supporting his buddy. He wants like revenge on Aiden. He was like, I'm the shrimp of this venture camp. <laughs> Can they get into a shrimp battle? Shrimp battle! Oh, I'm down, Aiden, but I'm Aiden. not out, Aiden! Aiden is, Aiden's pissed off that Dan got cast, but not, not Aiden. For DC1. Oh one. my god. I know, because uh, Aiden interesting but dan was in <laughs> kind of funny to put it i wonder what would happen if aiden was in season one oh god uh like he uh, actually was casted Tom and like, jake, Tom and jake's like... would be worse um... <laughs> oh my god well, no in this like situation i feel like like because aiden and jake's characters are so similar like you know shows like the type cast so i feel like Aiden would have been on in place of Jake. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. Or or it could be Dan too. It could be a good Dan. <laughs> I can see Dan. Would be so sick of his shit. Miriam would just be so annoyed at Aiden. It's like, stop your complaining. <laughs> oh wait, then we'd have you Miriam hit Aiden with a paddle. That'd be so awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> Aiden with a paddle. <laughs> yeah, especially if Jake isn't there to calm down Miriam. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like so grumpy all season. <laughs> Oh my god, imagine if and Aiden was, sassy, was so, grumpy uh, the entire would be time. So pissed. And she won. <laughs> and she was grumpy. She was like, I hate these kids, but at least I have my million. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like if Carol won season two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Think about it. That's the butterfly effect. If Aiden got cast in DC1, Miriam would have been so grumpy. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Oh my god. All right, do we want to talk um, about the elimination. <laughs> yep, Emer, bring us out. There's a few scenes before the elimination. I think it's actually, I think it's actually just one long scene, actually. Now that I look at it. Oh, but yeah. Oh yeah. Bring it's us the out yeah. It, it was basically like one discussion, but then like oh. one group part leaves, and the other group like comes in. But basically, we t go into they lose. It's like, are you disappointed? us? Chris I was like, yes, you're so disappointed. You guys only have one hour this year to see episode nine. Uh, and when that episode, Derek gave like them very little time. So now they're kind of struggling. Like, all right, it's like, Connor's not in the villain alliance. He goes. And then like, yeah, yeah. And and I love like Gret's little line. Yeah, he had a good old run. It's so funny. And then like, and then we get like a little happen where Alex like, hey, Rhea, are you sure you really want to go? It's like, yeah, I don't know, because like, villain alliance is good for our game. But Connor is a loyal player, which would go better for our odds. But if we strike down one of the Villains Alliance, then we have three enemies after us. But if we get rid of Connor, no enemies. So then we deliberate in, and then Connor walks in. And this is, like, one of the interesting scenes, is that we see, like, uh, Rhea use, like, voices Connor's opinions. Like, hey, Connor, would it be okay if we vote for Yule? And Connor's like, yes, actually, that's so nice. Because, like, Connor was waiting for Rhea to actually for him as a person. Oh, he was very like beaming with joy. And that is a hint related to one of the older confessionals where Connor says Rhea is sweet and caring and kind and I know her. Good old segue. And then we go to elimination. Or should we just talk about the talk still if anyone wants to add anything? Um hmm. I don't know. Says, I think you made us lose to Rhea and that was funny. <laughs> yeah. I think I like the yeah. fact that strategy wasn't as important in this episode because I feel like we've had some really big strategic fo focus episodes. Like with like getting voted out, that was a big strategic moment that like blew up the elimination. And like this felt more grounded. And I feel like I feel like that was kind of needed with this kind of episode having such like an easygoing vibe. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 not upset that you know usually i'm just like you know game talk game talk game talk strategy strategy you know vote people out like make moves or whatever but like i understand that uh like finding joy in like the the little things so i'm not opposed to this episode not being super strategic Yeah. yeah uh last episode had the whole month like five confessional montage here had like a scene but it was, I, I would say it wasn't it it was only one long scene as opposed to like a bunch of tiny scenes um 
But yeah, no, I, I like the fact that it's also not super strategy heavy. They just, yeah, Connor knows the writing. I love this one. Yeah. 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 Predictable elimination, though, like, this is really greatly. I just exactly. love to see Rhea be strategic because she's been like very like diva. Mm-hmm. Now, like we see her actually like talk things out with someone like Alec, who is to her strategic prowess of knowledge. It's mm-hmm. like a really fun little dynamic to have. Go- I think it At leads same, to like such a yeah. fun like, little mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's like <laughs> she treats Connor like absolute shit. I know. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So sad. It's so sad to see yeah. Connor. I love you, man. <laughs> but oh, oh god. Like, and I don't think Fuck. there was much he could have done, like to, because I feel like he, from the all the time that they were together in the game, like he just tried so hard to like be like Rhea, I'm with you. Like you can be a good person. Like I'll do anything for you. And then Rhea is just like, oh man, it's like she's constantly like just jabbing the knife into his back. And it's, yeah. Oh man, it's ruthless. I know. But yeah, again, that's, that's who Rhea is, and that's why we like her. Right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Rhea's. Oh, I have a funny comparison. Oh. Anyone will get it though. Is it a survivor? Like, remember Shan from the Survivor Forty One? It's basically that. I feel like Jay. I think it was his name. It's based as was Connor and Rhea in the season. It's literally like. Uh, Rio is like Shan's like yeah I'll give you some leverage and then just screws him over more in terms of his position mm-hmm. I think that's just like very like obviously though it's kind of rough because it's like damn they had such a great relationship in like season 2 it was like probably really top like done by Jobber but then it's like oh damn like they have nothing going for them but like I said there can always be a different current coming there's still 15 episodes to go how many would be fixed. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's all right. So before we end, why don't we? You know, it's a tradition at this point. Why don't we read the uh, the elimination, the vote out? <laughs> Who wants to be Crystal? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> hey, your vice. Um, why don't you be Crystal? <laughs> yeah. Be okay. All right. Once the votes are read, the decision is final. The person with the most votes must leave. Immediately. First vote. Connor. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> you. Oh, God. Who voted for me? <laughs> yeah. Connor. Fifth person voted out from this venture camp. Connor. That's three votes. That's enough. Yumph. Are you gonna cry, old man? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Connor. It's not personal. <laughs> what happened to your accent, Alec? You sound American. <laughs> oh no, no! I love how that's what he's concerned about. Not that he's just been eliminated. <laughs> Time to leave. It's the accent. It's important. <laughs> oh my God! We can still be friends, Connor. I'm still your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't Seth get broken up. God. You could have more gray hair as is. Oh my god. And remember when she was like, I'll keep them from targeting you. <laughs> I'm so Can that fabulous. be another meme? Fabula- fabulous. Yeah. Rhea yeah, is fabulous. Yeah, a lot of people say that the broken like English breaks their immersion. Like, people, just, people have broken English. It makes English it English so English. much yeah. better. Are you kidding? Right. I, love, you I, like? love I love Rhea's that accent. I love Rhea's accent. That adds to the immersion. Oh Rhea's accent's so great. It's like so rich. It's so good. When people say the broken English breaks their immersion, I'm like, okay, you don't hang out with international people. You right. Yeah, you They're don't right. hang up out with enough people, man. Get I think everyone should have an American oh. accent. So like, like, that's like the dumbest opinion ever. I love Wait, all the accents. The the show. Accent it's like very diverse with the cast and it really brings out all the personalities. No, no, well, oh. less the accent, more like the, I guess, the English, you know, the, the diction, I guess. And it's like some people just talk like that normally. That's, some people do that. Yeah, what the hell? And like, it's not even, oh. like, for Rhea, like, Nymphia, it's not even her first language. So everyone kindly fuck off about mm. criticizing her English. Right. I mean, that's just yeah. My, that's just my take, but. I don't want you to do to opinions here. <laughs> 
I, I know I know we were joking about like tar jetting and amphibious, but it's I gotta love, you know. Gotta love. <laughs> yeah, like people need to like relax. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, like yeah. you have and you can watch captions if you really want, but like <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love how Rhea speaks. Um yeah, like seriously. I I I wanna uh should I elaborate? Uh actually never mind. Um so Ooh. before we oh yeah, and Connor has three punishments, that's right. He has to clean the stage, so it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Connor, <laughs> time to clean the stage before I get really <laughs> mad. Alex, Alex compares Connor to Old Yeller. That's so funny. He just compares him to that like, was really funny. That was very funny. <laughs> that was very funny. Like, oh my god. Um, so two two questions specifically for Emer. One, is this good like concluding story for Rhea and Connor? And two, do you like the parallel to uh, the Rosa thing? I was acting Rosa. I literally was about to point out the Rosa parallel. I was like saying it's so funny. She's like the same. Fuck you out, Rosa. I fuck you out, Connor. I was like, damn. I'm like, they really so did that again. <laughs> but I will the say, regarding an end, I don't think the end is optimistic. <laughs> but like, I think for like this act, like act one of like the season, I think it's a good like setup to where like kind of like really plays into Rhea's hair because. We do see like Rhea is like very invested in her future. She's like career driven. She's like, I gotta do what's best for my career. And I think when Connor goes, I think in this game, you are starving, you're cold, you're alone. You're gonna eventually start to think you have all this time. Rhea's like, then she's gonna question all her actions. And I think that can really play into it. I think for like happening this early in the season, I think it's really well done that regard because there's so much like now with Connor gone you can open up so many pathways that Rhea's character can go now with Connor being like a good old push to her but like I said there's a lot of tricks leaves regarding these characters that are not known to the viewers like probably like some big old massive plot line like being hidden it's gonna happen soon it's gonna like blow everyone's face up but like I think for now I feel like this is just like really well done Yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, great. So, yeah, I think that's all for the episode. Um, before we get to the MVP and LVP stuff, why don't we uh, have some parting words for good old man Connor? Who wants to uh, talk about the guy? His little story. Rhea didn't deserve you. <laughs> Period. Period. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's but... so sweet. Oh. I agree. <laughs> like I said, it's like Connor's a, a man she needs, not the man she deserves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He didn't quit this time. Great. Not oh. I really like Connor, and I'm glad we brought him back as compared to a lot of other people we could have brought back. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. I've always been a Connor fan. Um I liked how he was in season two, and I'm glad we Expanded on that here in uh, season three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was Connor. Connor's such a good man. Like, I love how he always just stuck to his morals. And <laughs> ever since I seen him on the yellow team, I was like, "No, oh, this man is gonna struggle." But... Yeah, poor, poor Connor. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It just. It's so weird because in DC two, people were devastated that he was he was booted so early, and then like later, those same people are like, "Why is he all stars? Like, what? Right. If you like him? Then you should accept him." That's true. Like, I can't believe I'm some gonna people say were this. saying that about Ashley. Like, what are you even talking what? about? Yeah. yeah, we gotta have. We'll some say this much. You know? We're not not gonna have pre mergers. Exactly. I think if you look at it like a, it's a show, it's not like, oh, these are like the best players ever. These are the players that have a story left. Like when we look at who got cut, like Rosa, if you expect Rosa to be gone for a kid for two months for a bad mom, I'm exactly. joking, I'm joking. But, um, <laughs> no, but I, I, I Rosa, she got the money. She has her kid's future set. Like, she just wants to take a break for now. She has her representative, Lake, like who's going to be playing for Rosa. And Rosa has like instilled her values into. We don't need Rosa. Then, like, who's next? Like, all right, who got cut over, like, Ashley? Like, Lil. Lil's cool, but she said she was just there to represent her scouts. She felt like she did them proud. That was literally in the finale. 
a little makes sense being cut. Um, who else? Um, due to the will, like will would have been awesome, but I feel like the problem with will is just first boo, and it's very unfortunate. Like the fan base has this whole hive mind. It's like if you go early, you're not deserving of all star. I feel like all stars is really just like it could be flexible. Like, like it's just hard though. So I don't blame. I was just gonna say that like. Um, I've always been a big proponent of, like, um, people getting voted out as early as first boot. Like, if you're gonna bring them back, like, at least it's an interesting arc of them just wanting to yeah. improve themselves to being first boot. Yeah, well. But, like, I do understand, like, we're, for this season, like, it all stars. It's, like, you know, it's all stars. It's, like, best of the best. Like, so, um, I feel like the caliber of cast that we did assemble was, like, perfection. Exactly. In my opinion. But, People are going to think what they want to think if they wanted a certain character exactly. in, you know, sorry, but like, <laughs> I feel like the faces of this venture camp at this point are the 18 faces that we, mm-hmm. we pick. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. That's such a great way of saying it. Yeah. And also it's like Connor, like what he pre-merged, but like he pre-merged with Yule. Like he was the second best pre-merger. You can say Maggie plays farther, but Maggie never competed in a challenge. But like there's her <laughs> eligibility. I think Dan could be funny for like an early boo, but like I feel yeah. like Miriam is just on the guy. <laughs> bigger face, so I yeah. get like you need to represent on. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I mean if someone is replaceable. I would argue Miriam, not not Connor. Connor's not the replaceable one. Yeah, but, yeah. Connor. Like I could see eight of these people being replaced. So, right, I'll fight this battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe not eight. Like maybe five, five. So- so yeah, sad boot, but hey, there's a there's a comeback challenge. You never know what's gonna happen there. Exactly. <laughs> it's confirmed by Jared on Twitter, so we're not leaking. You gotta stay tuned because Lake could win the comeback, Hunter could win the comeback, Connor could win the comeback, James could even win the comeback, or Miriam. <gasps> yeah. Maybe and some other lovely person is all that we love. And there's still a few left, so mm. who knows? Oh. And I mean Connor's I don't know if this is a spoiler, but he's gonna clean the stage, so he'll be, he'll have like a Tiny appearance of me. Yeah, well, I had a joke I wanted to say, stage. but I want. Remember JPEG? How we joked about like Connor getting into Hunter's mind about uh, Tessa and Allie? I was like, yeah. how funny would it be if he got into Trevor's mind about Derek with the bad advice again? That'd be the funniest peril ever. Bad advice. <laughs> I mean, maybe it happens. That, that would be funny if it happened. That'd be quite funny. Um, I will say, I'm still funny. holding on to. I'm still holding on to my my theory that Ellie is going to be eliminated sometime before that comeback challenge. And if I feel like I don't know if she's going to get eliminated next, but like I feel like we're far enough in now where um, if they want her out before the comeback challenge, it's probably going to happen around now. If that yeah. makes sense. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Without further ado, why don't we get into the LVP MVP section, the, f- the last section of our podcast? Um, we're gonna do LVP first. The who, who is everyone's least favorite character of the episode? Who wants to start? That's so hard. I'll get the oh obvious gosh. one out of the way. Um, we all know. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> you? Oh, Gret? Oh, yeah, I know. One hundred percent. You? Allie? <laughs> We're talking about we talking about we we talking about freaking Demi's waitress over here. <laughs> what? Uh, Wait, who's LVP? No, I'm kidding. Huh? Just <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean for the reasons I already stated, we don't need to beat a dead horse. Yada yada. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ellie LVP for Genesis. I think it's the second time as well. <laughs> yeah. Are we surprised? No. Who wants to go next? I I need to think actually. I need I need to think about this for a bit. Me too. Huh. I need to look at the cast act. I don't even know who the cast is. Oh <laughs> my <Most> god. <laughs> who who would I? I you know, know what? I'm just gonna get out of I'm gonna get out of the way and say that um, this was a ch- this was an episode that I was very much anticipating for myself so i'm just gonna say that my most like my most valuable player in this episode is aiden even though he didn't do too too much i loved singing for this episode so i'm just gonna say aiden 
or my least valuable honestly that's that is so hard i i would maybe say that as far as like actually doing stuff this episode i maybe tess what Ooh. i was thinking that Mostly too because mm-hmm. tess didn't have like okay. a humongous role this episode but i don't think that's bad i think that's just like you know she, she had a really sing. big role <laughs> She had a big role, like, the the last episode. She had a really big role last episode, so I think that it's okay if she's not the best on this episode. Um, So maybe I'll say Tess. Not that, not that Tess is my least favorite overall. Maybe, like, just in the context of this episode, because it feels like everyone just did a little bit more. It's, it's honestly between... It's either her or Jake for me, but I feel like Jake had... The moments of like you know reacting to aiden and tom so i'm just gonna say that it was tess sorry jpeg <laughs> it's okay i love tess too but i respect right. that decision please okay fine um uh, I'll, I'll go next for my lvp and this one this one isn't because they did anything bad um it and it's not because they didn't do anything it's just what they did was like it's kind of there it's fine i'm gonna put fuel rate and really do anything <laughs> No. Oh my god, that's no. Fair. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. I don't really have any reason other than, like, like I feel like tested a little more. He already, like, didn't do a lot. Like, the market scene was great, but that's about it. <laughs> oh, man. What? I think it was great, though. I think it was great. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess that's is more the... than Tess, because Tess didn't even sing. So... Right. <laughs> oh my god. He's just avoiding it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fiori sang her heart out, and you put her in LVP. Exactly. Hey, hey. What's your name again? I forget. Uh, Tam, Tam, remember last episode when we were supposed to put Yule? You put oh, Fiore instead of Yule? Right. Yeah. Sorry. You know, no, but Tam is just the side for the decision. <laughs> uh, She's an exception. Exactly. What was that? What? One, what's your name again? Hmm? <laughs> I just, no, I genuinely forgot. I'm tired. I haven't slept in like a full day. I haven't slept in full Oh my god. Oh, oh my um, god. I just watched this video this board JPEG sleep and have. <laughs> Mark yeah, Sam, like you need some rest. Mark Sam, your LVP. Uh, I'll, go with, I'll go with my LVP really quickly. Um, My LVP for this episode. I feel like was also Fiore. I just felt like even though Tess didn't do much, I feel like Fiore could have given more. And while I do love that she gave the whole like this is not in my contract snark, you know I would have really loved to see her sing more. She just it would have just been so much more fun. So I was just the most disappointed there. Ooh. Aww. <laughs> I agree. <Poor> Fiore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay i was gonna i was gonna say connor again but that's my second time being me <laughs> to connor um just because like uh he's like blindly just he's just blind so i don't know <laughs> so it kind of came up like bad but no i won't do that to him um I have to say Jake, actually. But I really Ooh. did... Yeah, I enjoyed his performance in Magenta, um, Magenta's song a lot, though. But yeah. yeah, I feel like the whole Jealous thing, it's getting tired. Like, we we'll just yeah, sit I... down. Yeah. It's like the first time he has a right to be jealous, though. Like, that's where right, like, that's I true. don't want to put Jake because of that. But like, that's I do hear President, like, it keeps sticking to the same. I don't yeah. Be- yeah, like I don't know. He's just like not getting smarter about this, I feel. So I don't know. Um maybe if there was like if there's something new being added to the drama, maybe next episode though, but this time I was just not feeling it. So yeah, I'll have to go with Jake. I never feel it with Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Emer, what are your thoughts? <laughs> okay, so this one, I, 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 I'm I, still processing the episode, so it's like, oh, who do I put as an LVP? So this one might be shocking, but I always base my LVPs based on people who have a major amount of time to use it. I think I'm going to have the big old reaction, but I have to give it to Allie. Like, Allie wasn't oh, bad, oh. everyone was just better. Like, That's I just, true. like, look at the charts. 
I feel like Allie, like she she was like just Ashley's pawn. She's like, oh, Ashley's so good and make me feel comfortable. That's a prop to Ashley, not to Allie, because Allie's not growing in this. What Allie is doing is staying kind of con- And it's just like, she's like beating herself down. So I'm going to beat herself with her. So I think I had to give it <laughs> oh to her gosh. this episode. It's nothing personal because I like Allie a lot this season. Mm-hmm. But she just wasn't in. And I just think we gotta, I got to give it to her, the good old LVP. That's true. I forgot about, oh. Targeted. Targeted. <laughs> I was targeted. No, it wasn't targeted. I literally <laughs> just gave it like, her because very much is better. <laughs> We're back the love triangle right now. JPEX and shambles. You mentioned her grandpa. It was actually relevant for. <laughs> 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 um, true. So next we have the MVP uh, section. Uh, Vi, we have a, we have a thing where it's like if the voice actor puts their own character, then they can do two MVPs. So you can do a second MVP here. Oh, okay. Um, wow. Okay, this is gonna be very, very controversial, but Ooh. I really Ooh. like Yule this episode. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> we got oh, another like one! <laughs> he, has a, he has a big <laughs> role, I feel like he <laughs> tries to put Rhea in her place, like... I just really liked what Yule did this episode. Not with like all the the bad stuff towards Gret, but like he's funny. He's himself, which is not the best, but he's himself. He um brings the drama. <laughs> um he like yelled at Rhea, which I feel like more people need to yell at Rhea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, True. But True. yeah, I really liked you all this episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really, 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 really like you all. Um, well, if, yeah. <laughs> if I had to pick oh, a man. girl, like, um, if it's a, like a guy and a girl, like, um, I think just hmm. two in general. Yeah, it's just two in general. But if you oh. had to, who would you do? <laughs> Out of curiosity, <laughs> who'd you do? Uh, probably Ellie. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, you good. That's a good. That's a good segue for me. I am gonna put my MVP oh my as God. Ellie, uh, oh, even though oh what she did was awful. I'm not gonna deny that what she did was really bad. Really, you know. Um, I think there's a reason why there was that horror aspect with Tom and Jake. Sorry, Tom and Aiden kissing, right? Mm. Um, it's because she brought tension to the episode. Right. You know, it's like, oh, are they gonna do it? What's gonna happen? <laughs> so I think even though what she did is bad, she created this tension, and that's great for for TV. I agree. And also, with you guys. I gotta give Ellie props. She definitely also, is becoming her own character, not letting other people do moves for her. She's actually making moves. So I pr- appreciate her proactive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's good. Str- I mean, it's dirty strategy, but it's good strategy. So now you have like people that are gonna beef, you know. So that's gonna be great. Right. Could potentially beef. I don't know. Maybe they won't beef. Maybe they'll sort it out. And, like maybe Jake <laughs> will communicate for once. Who knows? <laughs> right. You're oh right. God, that's true. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> oh. It's- I know who it is. It's the blonde cowgirl. No. It's oh my not. god. <laughs> like I would that do being, that. That being said, Ashley didn't do a lot this episode either, but like she's <laughs> Ashley, so like true. she can never do anything wrong in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Except when she sits on a kid, but yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But she doesn't know how to use this darn thing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, Tam Emer, who wants to go? Yeah, uh, let me piggyback, and I, you know, piggyback. you make a <laughs> piggyback. Oh, you made a great point about Ellie, and like I really love that, like bringing tension. Um, I feel like the drama would have been as great without her. Uh, but overall, I'll still have to say Yule. No! Sorry. <laughs> Did you not insane. expect this? Oh my god, please. please. Guys, please. I was praying it wasn't. Please. God guys, damn it. Please. Oh my god. <laughs> well, fine. You know, like, I just, all of Tam's MVP are men. Something's <gasps> going on here. <laughs> no. You did not just point that out. Stop. You weren't supposed Hold to up. say anything. Damn. Damn, you gotta represent. True, okay. That's that's <laughs> that's not very feminist of me. Um, okay. <laughs> <Don't God. worry. laughs> Why did you say that? Look at this. Shit? Look at this. No freaking God, way. Really Alec twice is crazy. Um, okay. 
<laughs> and those are the guys that I find in a row attractive. too. That's crazy. <laughs> God. Okay, I have to pick a girl. Damn it, you put me in a box. Okay. Who the hell said Hunter? Pick Emily with Crystal. <laughs> We we all we all said um, during during the last episode of the podcast we all said Hunter except yeah. for uh, except for Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis is quirky like that. Quirky. Yeah, Genesis said Allie. <laughs> did I? I did. Yeah. God dang it! Dang, oh my god, Tam, am I st- really a sticking bit with of a trend. you? Damn! Oh my god! Should but I change you, it? You all, none of us will blame you because like you never. It's been a while since he gave you MVP. Like you gotta give him his little flower. Yeah, it's been a while since you gave him MVP. Might as well. I don't blame you. Might as well. I'm I'm getting better, right? Not really. Um... Just you wait. It's fine, Tim. We'll do it for like next MVP one. We'll do it for like episode seven. Yeah. Um, How many How many episodes till Tam submits a woman? Oh my god! Please. (laughs) It'll be next episode. I swear. I think maybe. Don't count on it. It's all the women bad next episode. Like, oh. <laughs> oh gosh, but Ellie was close. Ellie was very, very, very close. But yeah, Yule just brings the humor and like, I want to strangle him through the screen, but that's what makes him so good. So yes, I love it. And his interactions with Emily, of course, it's great. Okay, I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. This episode's yeah. so packed. I forgot about that. I that's know, fair. Crazy. <laughs> Um, okay, Emer's asking for his MVP list. One second, I'm gonna send him a screenshot, and then he'll do his thank thing. You, thank we'll you. save Genesis for last. We'll save Jenny Benny for last. Yeah, Genesis <laughs> has to be last. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that hot of a take. All right, anyway, never mind. Okay. That oh God, I was about to say Rhea, but like Rhea's I might want to change that. Yo. To Rhea, come on. Rhea. Rhea. I'm not gonna do Rhea. Like I'm gonna be. I'm not predictable. Okay. <laughs> the predictable hours are done. No. All right, so. <laughs> hey, I, I'm really tempted to actually say you'll too, but man, I can't. I can't. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta shake the bowl. Yeah. Right, you know what? I got. I gotta appreciate quirkiness. I'm gonna be Crystal as my MVP. This is a tough one. Oh my this. gosh! I feel like Crystal and all her puns is just like one of the it. funniest freaking things ever. That's so true. And it's like, wow. and then like also she had like what else? Like the whole clean up thing. Like she was being so pissed off. Like gotta like appreciate that. <laughs> Even though it's like she might want to be at the moment. Like I do love like a lot of the real stuff, but it's like still like developing. It hasn't like hit yet. It's like, hints. I can't give. I can't award hints. I can't award major things. I feel like Crystal does like a lot of like things and she has more personality this episode than ever. I really feel like this was a great like time to throw her into the MVP list for me. Nice. Yeah, Aww. no, I that says a lot because we've been very like kind of ignorant of the host plot because we don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it's yeah. heat up, you know, things are happening. <laughs> yeah. I think Crystal deserves a tiny bit of love. Right. I agree. Yeah, I think that's fair. All right. Bring us out, intro boy, outro boy, whatever you want to call you. <laughs> um. <sighs> okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, th- my MVP is not really going to be a-, a big shocker, but I I will say in regards to this, this is the second time that Emer has made me eat my words in the whole season, um, because I'm going to give this uh, MVP to Connor. Oh. Um. Wow. Oh. What? <laughs> Emer is you're giving it to celebrating, <laughs> and the reason why I, I give it to Connor is I, I, I was I, not I, expecting that for context. <laughs> for context, I was never a fan of Connor and Rhea's plot throughout um these six episodes um because it just felt kind of like because stories can be predictable but still enjoyable, um, <laughs> but. I didn't feel Con- I felt Connor's Connor Rios was both predictable and not very enjoyable. Um, cause I don't know, just Venture Camp in terms of storylines, it seems to get into um it, it seems to really love um those stories that like involve um a character sort of like making a mess of themselves or embarrassing themselves in some way, like how Jake is constantly doing that to to uh in regards to tom etc etc um and and it it felt like another one of those plot points and i was like "Ah, i'm not really feeling this 
Uh, I thought this was going to drag on for a while. They ended it really nicely and very satisfyingly. Um, and it was so good seeing Connor tell Rhea off at the end. Um, it was very much therapy. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, like, Connor, although I wasn't as much of a fan of him as I was in DC2 going into it, um, uh, I will say, I don't know if I'd say he's better than DC2 Connor, but he's definitely on par. Um, I, I really liked how it all closed out. He was still as goofy and lo lovable as he was in DC2, and yeah. <laughs> That's true. Such good points. Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> his <laughs> standing up to Rhea in the final moments. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you did forget oh, about him. He was the Melvin P. I know. I'm joking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Don't get gosh. me wrong, Eva. Yeah. This is not going to be another Alex situation in the sense that all of a sudden I like Rhea and Connor's plot points. <gasps> <laughs> it was so funny because it's like the second time I've influenced Genesis. I said like episode two, <laughs> yeah. Genesis, like I hate Alex. I'm like, give him a chance. Episode three, he's going to pop off or something. Like I thought it was coming, and it came, and I was like, yes, it did. Yo. And like for Connor too, I was like, it's not going to last long. You don't worry, it won't drag. Because I was pretty sure Connor was like second. You were saying Rhea, and I was like, eh. eh? <laughs> And this man's made me eat my words twice. This is why I'm a sidekick <laughs> this season. Every time's the charm. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. And oh. you know what, Genesis? It's probably going to happen many times over. <laughs> prediction. Correct. That's my prediction. When will the student Listen, what happened over? Master? Cut Eventually. this. Well, the it's going to be funny, though. Will the student overtake the master? It came. <laughs> Genesis is just one thing at one point that was very, like, whoa, that's correct. Yeah, I... I'm surprised. But Genesis, I'm like I said, I give him flowers. Like, he's so good at a lot of things. Like, here's the thing, like, for me, like, I'm good at, like, no the style because, like, Shopper is predictable a bit. But Genesis is, like, good at thinking, like, out of the box, like, some things. I'm like, mm. oh, Genesis is a great point. And, like, we combine yeah. our things, and, like, our notes are really good because of it you guys are scary the problem is the problem is i think two out of the box to the point where i expect out of the box and emer's like you know, <laughs> ground yourself a little bit and i'm like oh right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel is this like it's gonna be a fun ride till october right. from the scariness oh god <laughs> <laughs> Oh, out of the boy. box thank you stay tuned for disventure <laughs> oh, <Dispenture. laughs> all right now you can take us out mr emer okay. with a gun here you go okay oh. is, is there any little already? secret out there? <laughs> there it is. all right so everyone i think you've been singing along to this lovely tune of this podcast if you loved everyone here, please check out our links in the description as we do have other social medias or whatever um, to, to do. Uh, I want to thank Vi for coming along in, in, in this lovely musical episode. It was a pleasure to have you, Vi. Yay. Can I go back to being Australian? <laughs> yeah, yes. go back to Australia. <laughs> Watch more than old man. Oh my god, I didn't know you were Australian. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my yeah, I've been Australian this whole time. I'm just talking with an accent. Oh my god. Guys, he was acting for us now. Tanner, did you that... seriously not know that? That I'm oh Australian? Gosh. No. It's now Tarzan that's... From, from Australian Survivor. It's Tarzan. Oh now that's no, two never make that comparison <laughs> ever again. How dare you? Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> oh my How god. How dare you, JPEG? <laughs> we are not friends. <laughs> no. The second, author, uh, er, the second actor I didn't know was Australian. I'm. I'm okay. Okay. Australian Survivor. There we go. Aiden. You're Australian. Luke. Oh, that's not. That's no. I want to be. Um. I want to be David. <laughs> oh, okay. You can be. You can be the god. What's the name? The golden god. That's his name. <laughs> yes. No. Actually, I want to be George. Can I be George? <laughs> okay. George is like con. Regina I George. I'm just kind of goofy though. Too. <laughs> that's so funny. That's <laughs> okay, Dawson. You're Dawson. <laughs> no. Can I not? Can I not? Tam really is Dawson. Tam, Tam is Let Dawson. Tam is Dawson. Emer is Max Dawson. What? The Dawson. What? All right. 
Dead. I guess this is our, the fan cast, and if you guys want to fan cast in with us Survivor players, if this video gets like 20 likes, we'll do it. Probably not, I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, please stay tuned, because we're going to have more Disventure Dispatch episodes. There is still 15 episodes to analyze, so we fun to do, and there might be some bonus ones in between, we don't know. We haven't planned any out, but please show your support in the comments. I love reading them, we all love reading them. Um, it's a lovely joy to see everyone's thoughts regarding every little thing. It's... But yeah, please remember to stay adventurous and that there's one moral thing to remember. Piggy, piggy, piggy back. Oh, piggy, piggy, piggy back. Won't you piggy me back? Piggy, piggy back. Won't you piggy me back? Won't you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Aiden, help me. I am walrus.